everybody hope everybody is having a good evening i'm so glad to be back with you guys it's been so long probably what two weeks now um i've just been fighting this head cold sinus infection and i'm still not 100 percent. but i wanted to get this done because i wanted to get the story we're doing our case of the week tonight for anybody that's new here and uh i'd intended it to do it last friday but like I said, I just I couldn't do it last Friday. I've been in bed for like a week and a half. So I apologize for my voice and uh, my nasally sound, but uh, I'm going to make it through it. I've got my Kleenex, Kleenex box here to my side. So if I say excuse me for a minute and I mute my cam and my mic, it's just because I don't want to be rude and uh, blow my nose on camera. So please bear with me with, uh, with that. But like I said, I'm so glad to be back. I missed you guys. Um, it's been a long two weeks. I feel like I've, I got to get back in the back in the routine, back in the habit here, get back to the used to this live stream thing here. But I uh, appreciate everybody that's here, everybody who's here in chat. Um, you knew is here. We'll see who's here already. You knew is here. Thank you for being here. You knew. Miss Marion Tate is here. Always a pleasure to have you here, ma'am. Uh, Chris Gideon is here. Always a pleasure to have Chris here. Uh, get a look see is here. Welcome. Good to have you here. Get a look see. Nan R is here. Welcome, Nan R. And once again, my my swamp signal. I hope my swamp signal is going to hold out tonight because um, this is such an important case and important story to get out. So let me go uh, to my comments on my phone while I'm getting my second self back up on my laptop hopefully it'll hold out um nan r is here um arctic fox true crime thank you for being here sir it's always an honor to have you here if you guys have not checked out arctic fox true crime please do check it out he does wonderful work um he is a video making and flyer making uh, machine for missing persons um it's great content out every day um 24 7 he just uh, does a wonderful, fantastic job. Hello, uh, Miss Barbara Hall is here. It's always a pleasure to have Miss Barbara here. Um, anybody that doesn't know, Miss Barbara Hall uh, is I, the last um, case of the week we did was Timmy D's. Uh, Miss Barbara is uh, Timmy's mother, and Miss Marion Tate, who I said hello to earlier, is Timmy's aunt. And that Timmy's case is also a Fredericktown, Missouri case, just like the uh, Durante Martin case that I'm going to share with you tonight. Another uh, Fredericktown, Missouri case that, once again, just like um, Timmy's case, of course, I don't have answers. Because, um, you know, we don't have answers. We weren't there. All we know, I have to go off of is what the family, what Miss Kimberly Lotz, um, I hope Miss Kimberly is, is, will be able to. Uh, be here tonight. I don't know if she will or not, but Miss Kimberly Lotz has been in chat before. Um, Miss Kimberly is Durante Martin's grandmother. Um, 
but with Durante's case, a horrible case, like I said, you know, obviously I don't have the answers. I wasn't there, but I have a lot of questions, a lot of concerns, most of the same questions and concerns that I had when we did Timmy's case. And especially, um, I'm not going to mention, uh, and for just um, full transparency and disclosure, just for liability purposes, because nobody has formally been charged or named as a person of interest, unfortunately, in um, Durante's case, just like in Timmy's case. For liability purposes, so I won't get zapped uh, for slander or defamation. I'm just going to be using first names um, on some of these names, but I put all the uh, links to all these source material that I used is in the description box. And you can please, I encourage you to read all the articles that are linked. It will give you names, uh, full names and situations that occurred and um yeah, it's gonna it's gonna be a tough one to get through, but we will make it through just like we did with Timmy's case. And it's just such, like I said, a, such an important story that needs more attention, deserves more attention. Miss Kimberly, uh, Durante's grandmother, Miss Erica, um, Durante's mother, the whole family—they need some answers and they need some closure. And from what I can tell in my research and everything that's because uh, I watched some interviews with Miss Kimberly and Miss Erica on some YouTube channels and some news clips that I saw. Um, they're not getting any answers. Uh, and this is a case that's almost three years old. It'll be three years old this year, uh, April 25th, because it happened on uh, April 25th of uh, 2021. Still no answers, still no investigation. It's just uh, a travesty, in my opinion. Once again, this is uh, just my opinion, but after it, for any of you who are not familiar with this case, um, I'm sure you will uh, hopefully agree with me that uh, something needs to be done, uh, more investigated needs to be done. So I'm just going to bring you the information that I've found um, in my research, bring it to you to the best of my ability and let you make your own decisions and uh, opinions about what you think happened. I have my, like I said, I don't know for sure because I wasn't there, but I do have, like I said, lots of questions, lots of concerns. I do have opinions on what I think most likely happened. But once again, I wasn't there, so I can't say for sure. So, let me, sorry, I'm multitasking my, trying to run a stream yard on my laptop too because it makes it easier to control things. But, uh, we, I can do it the old-fashioned way if I have to. <laughs> uh, let's get caught up and see who else is here. Once again, uh, get down to where I was. Mm -hmm. All right, that's where I was. I said Arctic Fox is here. Chris Gideon, uh, our friend Dave out on the prowl is here. Welcome, Dave. Yes, I, I'm feeling better, Dave. I'm not 100%. Like I said, once again, apologies for the nasally scratchy voice, but I'm doing better. At least I'm out of bed and upright, so I count that as a win. Uh, get a look, see. I'm probably gonna start repeating names here. I'm just trying to make sure I'm welcome welcoming everybody in before we get started. Uh, Miss Marion, Nan. There's Miss Kimberly Lots. Hello, Miss Kimberly. I'm so glad you're here. Um. Like I said earlier, guys, Miss Kimberly Lance is Lots is Durante, Durante's um, grandmother. So I'm glad to have you here, Miss Kimberly. Um, thank you for letting me share Durante's story, and I hope I can do it justice. Um, as long as if I can just get the information across and and make as many people aware of the of Durante's story as possible, I will uh, feel like I have succeeded somewhat. You know, on my little small channel here, I mean, it takes all of us. So please, anybody after the stream is over, please um, hit the like button, um, share, share wherever you can. Friends, family, um, any missing persons, cold case, true crime, Facebook group or groups you might be in, any social platform, share anywhere and everywhere you can to get Durante's story out to as many people as possible. Because the more people that know about this case, the more voices that speak up. Um, to try to get some closure or at least some investigating done in this case, the better. So please, so 
Miss Kimberly, I'm honored to have you here tonight. Um, as always, thoughts, prayers, and good vibes go out to you, to Miss Erica, to your whole family. And uh, I just, always, your, your whole family is, uh, ever since I was made aware of this case, um, the whole family has uh, been in my thoughts and prayers. All right, let's see, get caught up. Sure, I got everybody welcomed in that's here right now. Making sure my um, computer comments are caught up with my. And R says, I always hope that when I come to one of these sites that I've seen something and that I hopefully know something that can help. Absolutely. Um, yeah, because you never know who, who watches. Hopefully um, somebody will see this video that may have some information that either that either they think is, there's no bit of information that is too small in these cases, especially a case like Durante's because in my opinion, there are definitely people out there who know what happened. Either they're unwilling or too scared to say anything. Um, so hopefully somebody will see this and have some information that they can bring to authorities. And then hopefully the second part of that is will the, the authorities do anything with the information that they get? Because... And anybody who's watched my channel knows that I am not anti-law enforcement. I support all the first responders, law enforcement, EMS, fire, military. But just like in Timmy's case, when I was researching Dronte's case, there's just so many things that were done, in my opinion. And I'm not a professional. I have nothing to do with law enforcement in any capacity other than having friends um in law enforcement and you know EMS and you know watching channels like uh, Mr. Steve at True Crime Web who is a retired law enforcement and CSI and just um, in my opinion things um, were not done correctly or not done at all once again this is just all my opinion but uh, like I said I'll, I will bring you this information and let you make your own decisions all right Hey, Shauna. Shauna Kaufman's here. Good to have you here. Junior is here. Hey, Junior. Good to see you here. I'll try to, uh, maybe you can at least watch some of this, Junior, before you have to go to bed. I know Junior is, uh, goes to bed early and gets up early, but welcome, Junior. It's nice to uh, have you here as always, my friend. Absolutely. You, didn't, you don't even have to say thank you. Ms. Camilla said thank you for opening your platform to get my uh, Durante's case out. Absolutely, ma'am. Um, this is a case that, uh, like I said, I have I have more, more questions, um, more questions than answers. Um, I have my opinions about what happened. Um, it's just such a, such a horrible case. And um, to me, like I said, in my opinion, it has not been handled correctly. It has not been investigated to the fullest extent that it can be investigated to. Um, so, yes, you, you don't have to thank me, ma'am. Thank you for, um, and everybody else who brought this case to my attention. Um, so I can do the best that I can to uh, get the information out to make more people aware. Absolutely, Miss Marion says thank you all for being here and putting uh, our stories out there. Absolutely, Miss Marion. I still um, think about Timmy's case, and I'll probably at some point do a follow up video um, with any uh, additional information I find, or if you or uh, Miss Barbara have any information that I can uh, put out there regarding any new developments or anything that needs to be put out there, or you know, you guys are. Uh, all you have to do is email me. You have my, what I call my real um, email address that you've been uh, emailing me to. And you can also email me at my um, new, uh, here it is, 
my new uh, one I put up, and I don't know if it's going to come up. It's Southern Gal True Crime at uh, Hotmail.com. Let's see if I can get it up on. There it is. Southern Gal True Crime at Hotmail.com. But like I said, I think Miss Barbara and Miss Marion, and I know Miss Kimberly has my has my real email address. Feel free to email me there. I don't mind you guys using my real address, my real uh, what I call my real personal email address. Um, I have complete trust and faith in you guys, so it does not bother me at all. All right, just trying to see. Uh, Oh, David said, uh, and David's in Massachusetts. We just got pummeled with a uh, heavy rain and snow. What about that earthquake, uh, Dave? I know you're in Massachusetts. They had a, a 4.8 earthquake that happened in New Jersey. Um, that was just a. Uh, that's the first time in a, that I've ever heard of a. A. Earthquake on the East Coast. I mean, I know it's happened before, but I think they said it hadn't happened in like a century. So prayers and thoughts to all those people. I don't think anybody got heard that I know of. Um, welcome, Erica Cameron. New name. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Good to have you here. Good to have everybody here. Everybody who, hears in who is here in chat. Everybody who um, is watching replay. Welcome. And Let's see. Oh, goodness. Nan says that uh, her, she, uh, my daughters and I felt the earthquake. Bless your hearts. Yeah, I watch the, uh, I have a habit. I'm a weather weather nerd too. So I have a habit of when I get up in the mornings, I switch it over to the weather channel and uh, watch it and see what's going on. And uh, I watched it, mo the weather channel most of the uh, morning. Oh, goodness. Okay. Let me get down to the, uh, all right, Erica Cameron. This is Erica Lotz. This is Miss Durante's mom. It is an honor to have you here. I didn't recognize the name. I knew your name was Erica, but the Cameron, um, threw me off. Welcome, Miss Erica. Um, thoughts, prayers, and good vibes to your family. Um, thank you for letting me share Durante's case. I hope I do can do it justice. I'm going to uh, bring the information as I have found it to the best of my ability and knowledge. Um, so thank you, Miss Erica, um, for being here. So let's show Miss Erica, Miss Kimberly, some love in the chat. Um, this is uh, Durante's family, family members, his grandmother and his mother. So let's show them some love and respect in the chat, as always. And also um, Miss Marion and... Miss Barbara, who is uh, Timmy D's mother and aunt, please always show them love and respect in the chat. Because we are, that is what we're here for. We're here for these family members to get their loved ones stories out there um, to the best of our ability, to our little community, our little village that we have going here. Um, yep, that is what we are here for. All right. I think I've got everybody welcome in. Still having trouble with my. Okay. All right, we will get started with before. Um, I'm gonna have to make my full screen. Here. Hold on. It's gonna be a dumpster fire. I'm gonna try not to turn it into a dumpster fire, guys. I promise. But with me, you never know. You never know what's going to happen. There we go. Okay. So I always start out with a, a missing person or two or three, depending on how many I came across of. Um, in the beginning of all my live streams and chat or chats, live streams or videos. Um, this one is actually a uh, good news. Uh, I had her was going to pitch her as a missing person. Um, Wendy uh, Sanchez, she had gone missing from Van Buren. But when I would check for an update, she has been found safe. So that is always good when um, a missing person, especially our teens, are found safe. 
so that is a good news. We have Braxton Southern. She went missing from Van Buren, Arkansas on April 3rd of this year. She is just 16 years old. A white female, five foot seven, 110 pounds with the blue eyes and brown hair. And I'm sorry, I'm about to lean into the screen to read this small writing. She was last seen wearing uh, red plaid pajama pants with green leggings. Um, underneath a black sweatshirt that says antisocial. So if you have any information about Braxton or her whereabouts, please contact the Van Buren Police Department at 479-474-1234. And the last one we have is also from Van Buren, uh, Talon Hall. I had featured him probably uh, two or three weeks ago now because um, he went missing once again from Van Buren on a uh, February 29th of this year. He is just 17 years old, a white male, 5'11, 135 pounds, with brown eyes and brown hair. He was last seen in Van Buren. He could possibly, possibly be in the Fort Smith or Greenwood, Arkansas area. So if you have any information about Taylor, his possible whereabouts, Contact the Van Buren Police Department at 479-474-1234. Or if you happen to see him in the Fort Smith or Greenwood area or any other area of Arkansas, call 911 and they can get you in touch with the uh, proper authorities. All right. I believe that is, that is all of our missing persons for the night. So we will, and the way we're going to do this um, to keep it, uniform and um so i can get all this information out i'm going to do the presentation give you all the information that i have then after that i will go back um to the top of the comments or where i left off in comments and answer any questions comments and any you guys might have um miss kimberly miss erica if uh, feel free to throw in any comments you have if there's any information that i give that you know to be wrong or anything that I have not included, feel free to put it in chat and I will make your comments um, priority to get to all those. Since you are family, you know this case uh, inside out, obviously. Um, so that way it gives for anybody who might not want to stick around for uh, the comments and questions or to keep me from stopping and starting giving information catching up on comments at least uh people will get all the information like i said and then if they don't want to stick around for the comments and the questions part of the show then at least they get all the information um the important information which is a uh, durante so with that said we will get started so what the question is what really happened to durante and this, once again, uh, from Fredericktown, Missouri, 2021. On April 25th, 2021, Durante was found deceased in the attic of a house owned by a known white supremacist. He had a, a GSW to his head. The local coroner quickly ruled his death self-harm. I have to be careful how I phrase stuff or YouTubers at me. It has been almost three years. Like I said, April 25th of this year will be three years. No one has been arrested. Uh, there are, like I said, there are more questions than answers. More questions have surfaced over the years. And the Missouri Highway Patrol, who I'm assuming is in charge of doing an investigation that apparently that they have never done, even after a juror's inquest, have shared nothing. Now, if, like I said, um, Ms. Kimberly or Ms. Erica has anything that they feel comfortable sharing or can share as far as any developments that I haven't found, please, um, like I said, put it in comments or in chat comments and I will uh, most definitely get to them. So a little bit about Durante, you can see him there. And thank you to uh, Miss Kimberly. A lot of these pictures that I'm using in the slideshow, Miss Kimberly um, emailed them to me, I'm assuming from her personal collection. So thank you, um, Miss Kimberly, for sending me um, those pictures and allowing, allowing me to use them. I'm also, I'm going to use them at some point um, to make a tribute video 
Um, I'm also going to, just as, as an aside, um, Miss Marion and Miss um, Barbara, if you have any pictures of Timmy that you can send me to include for a tribute video to Timmy, please email them to me also. So you can see Durante there, that smile. He's just got such a beautiful, infectious smile. And this one thing I noticed when I was looking at all these pictures, what a, just an infectious um, smile he had. You can tell his personality just shines through. And uh, I just I just can't imagine. Um, so he was a 19 year old, a caring brother, a supportive teammate. He played football. He was a hardworking student. Um, he was, his life was taken just as he was about to live out his dream of playing college football. To those who knew him, the news of his uh, death by self-harm, allegedly, uh, was both tragic and suspicious. Obviously, it was tragic, but from what I've read, it, even more so, it is very suspicious, in my opinion. The inconsistencies, gaps, and the questions around the events that led up to and following Durante's death at the home of James. I'm just going to say James, but you can read. I think I just put his uh, initial up there. Once again, for liability purposes, since nobody has been formally charged, I'm going to stick with the first names, but that does not necessarily mean that I don't have my opinions. So, uh, these questions have uh, yet to be answered um, going three years on, still no answers, no invest, no more investigation, nothing. So uh, Durante was uh, working towards his goal of playing college football after he received a scholarship. He was described as loyal, kind, he was a good kid. Uh, his high school coaches and the local police um, spoke highly of him. He was taking classes to bring up his SAT test scores for the fall. And uh, while taking classes, he was also working. I believe he was working at a restaurant and maybe at a Walmart. But we all know what was going on in 2021. The pandemic was happening. So I think he uh, either lost one or both of the jobs due to uh, the pandemic. As uh, unfortunately, a lot of people did. So really quickly, we're just going to go through a basic timeline just to give you an idea. And then we're going to go, we're going to go through the basic timeline. Then I'm going to break, break stuff down um, to the best of my ability. But I just wanted to go through this basic timeline and give you some background information on some of the players in this, uh, this case, this situation. Um, so on April, and please pay attention because especially uh, to this. So on April 22nd of 2021, Durante had surgery on his right hand, which was his dominant hand. So in other words, he was right handed. The procedure, um, he had several pins were placed in his hand, which resulted in his arm being set in a thick cast that stretched from his fingertips on his right hand all the way up to his elbow. So keep in mind, he has pins in his arm or in his hand. He has a very thick cast from his fingertips to his elbow and his right hand is his dominant hand. Let's keep that in mind. So on April 24th, Durante was at a birthday party for a girl named Lainey in a remote town at the home of her father, James. And this was the man uh, he prominently, prominently displayed a Confederate flag on his house. He was known for a bigot, bigoted social media post. I have looked at those posts. I believe um, you can find them on the uh, Justice for Durante website. There is a link in the description box to the website, please. Go check out that website and all the information that is there. I did look at the social media posts that uh, James put on Facebook, but I chose not to share them here because they are very offensive. They're vile. They're filthy. They're disgusting. And I did not want them on my channel. 
just to give you an idea of the kinds of things that James, uh, the kind of ideals that he had and the things that uh, he put on his Facebook page. Like I said, if you, if you want to look at them, they are, I believe, on uh, the Justice for Dronte website. So on April 25th, around 3.01 a.m., James called 911. And I do have, um, I'm going to play the 911 call. I'm not going to play it now, but I'm going to play it later when we get into the breakdown of the timeline. So at 3.01 a.m., James called 911. He is heard calmly saying, apparently a guy just shot himself. So when EMTs arrived, Durante was found deceased in uh, James's home with a GSW to the head. So this is the first, well, it's not the first thing, but one of the big things that is very disturbing to me should be disturbing to anybody. So Durante's mother and grandmother, Miss Kimberly and Miss Erica, did not learn of his death until the following morning, and it was not by the police. If I remember correctly from what I've read and the interviews I've watched, and please, um, once again, Miss Kimberly or Miss Erica, please do not hesitate to correct me on anything that I have wrong. I believe it was maybe a family member. A cousin, somebody had called one of Durante's cousins, and then the cousin either called Miss Erica or Miss Kimberly and said, Hey, I just got this phone call that Durante is deceased. You know, they had no idea. The police never, and we'll get into this all this later and break it down. The police never contacted, to my knowledge, never contacted Miss Erica. Miss Kimberly, any member of the family directly to tell them what had happened to Durante. So on April 26th, a local coroner conducted an autopsy and concluded that Durante had passed um, from self-harm. Now, we'll get into this deeper. And once again, I want to make sure I have my facts straight. So correct me if I'm wrong. If I remember correctly from what I've read, the coroner before or just right after before even the family found out, they did the autopsy. They had him embalmed. They had sent him to a um, funeral home without getting permission from the family members to have him embalmed, to do the autopsy, to choose which funeral home that they wanted him sent to. So that tells you right there that, in my opinion, something, uh, red flags everywhere. So on April 27th, two days after Durante was killed, Having still not heard from law enforcement directly, Durante's mother, Miss Erica, reached out to the Sheriff's Department for information about Durante's death, where she was met with hostility and she was given no information. She was given the runaround, basically, which is abhorrent. It is disgusting. It is so, so wrong on so many levels. It just blows my mind. Um, like I said, we'll, we'll get uh, more into this, the details, the intimate details. But I just wanted to give you this basic timeline first. So, on May 11th, the family, uh, Durante's family, ordered a second independent autopsy. And the findings were released and they noted uh, several inconsistency, inconsistencies from the initial autopsy. And let me bring up my notes that I have to read from. So on the second autopsy, so before the second autopsy was even ordered, the Madison County Sheriff's Department announced the results of their preliminary investigation on its Facebook page. Didn't bother to contact the family, but they put it on the Facebook page four days after Durante passed away. 
stating that he had uh, passed away from a self-inflicted uh, GSW at a fragrant town home on April 25th. His mother, Miss Erica Lotz, who had recently moved to Ferguson from Park Hills, never believed that Dante's death was self-harm. She hired Dr. Jane Turner, a former pathologist for the St. Louis Medical uh, Examiner's Office to conduct a second autopsy. And as quoted by Ms. Turner, quote, there are no findings on my examination of a contact GSW or a near contact GSW or even a near GSW or close or even intermittent. Did everybody get that? She says this entrance wound is what we what would be called in forensic pathology a distant entrance wound. The end of the gun would have been two or three feet or more away. Durante's family and friends said the Madison County Sheriff's Department, along with the coroner's office, has not did not return any of their calls seeking seeking more information. So we have, like I said, after the preliminary autopsy, before they even I don't think they even contact, you know, they did not contact the family, but they put it on, you know, four days later, they had already put it on Facebook, ruled it a uh, self-harm. And not taking into consideration some other things that I'm going to let you know about that had happened on the same property where Durante supposedly took his own life. So, one of these other things. On a May 2000, in May of 2021, James continued to, to comment on social media regarding Durante's death. And uh, he texted someone stating that Durante was the second person to pass away from self-harm at his home, at James's home, the same property where Durante supposedly took his own life. So that first person who supposedly took their life, on the morning of Halloween in 2014, uh, James walked into the Madison County Sheriff's Department. According to police reports, quote, James was pacing around, waving his arms about. He moved in a jerky motion, moving his head about. His eyes were wide open. He stated he wanted to report a missing person. James said that 20-year-old Nick Lowry, Lowry, who was involved with one of James's daughter, Brooklyn, at the time, had gone missing. A deputy then gave James paperwork that he took home, but he did not fill the paperwork out and he never returned to the police station. Later in that day, Brooklyn came into the sheriff's office and said that Lowry, quote, said he couldn't take it anymore, that he had a firearm that his grandfather had left to him. He had only one bullet for the firearm. The firearm had no clip. And Nick said he was going to take his own life. And then supposedly he took the firearm and walked into the woods. We're following along here. The next day, Nick Lowry's body was found in the woods on James's property with a GSW to the head. The coroner ruled the death self-harm. The police report about Lowry's death states that Lowry's father, Matt, came to the Madison County Sheriff's Department and spoke with deputies about the investigation. The report says that Matt, quote, stated that he had been informed by Nicholas's half-brother Brian in the past that James had made threatening statements toward his son, Nicholas Lowry, the deceased individual on James, James, uh, James's property. Um, however, upon further questioning of James and after the coroner's ruling, deputies found no cause to further the investigation. So. We have a person, Nick Lowry, a gentleman, had been uh, apparently dating one of James's daughters, had 
according to um, Nick's brother. Um, the father said that the brother, Nicholas's half brother, said that James had threatened Nick in the past. Nicholas ends up with a GSW to the head on James's property. But they found no reason to do any further investigation and I ruled it self harm. Okay, so do we get all that? And this is not the uh, this is not the only as far as we know, this is uh, the only other self harm that has happened on his property that we know of. But that's not the only other incidents of violence uh, regarding regarding James. So in July 30th of 2021, given the number of in inconsistent, sorry, I can't talk, inconsistencies in the case, a jury was impaneled. Um, I believe it is called, it wasn't a grand jury, it was called a coroner's inquest. It consisted of, I believe, six people. But I'm, from what I read about it, I, I'm assuming it's kind of ran like a grand jury is. They bring in uh, witnesses, evidence, witnesses to testify. So the jury was impaneled to review the uh, coroner's report and to review the facts of the case. But by July 30th, the same day, and I believe it took less than two hours, the jury determined that Durante's death was the result of violence and not self-harm. So in other words, it was not self-harm, it was not an accident, it was violence, a.k.a. homicide. So, we have that. So, going back to Mr. James, in April, April 14th of 2023, or excuse me, 2022, uh, James was arrested. He was held in custody for a shooting incident that he was involved in that was unrelated to Durante's case. And let me get the details. One minute. There it is. So in April of 2022, James, for whatever reason, moved from the house um, several miles outside the Fredericktown city limits into the city. So now he was subject to new jurisdiction and it did not take him long to get arrested. Imagine that. In the early hours of Thursday, April 14th, James said that he believed that his daughters were with a gentleman or a person named Jacob or Jacob's brother and that they were in danger. James left his house, drove to where he believed his daughters to be. While driving, he encountered Jacob and another man in a car on North Mine Lamont Avenue. James said that he pulled up behind the two men to just talk. Apparently, according to him, they did not stop. So James, quote, rammed them off the road. And according to a probable cause statement, James said that Jacob then opened fire on James's truck. James said that he tried to escape, but he ended up backing up into a tree. He then ran to the Madison County Sheriff's Office on foot. Jacob and the other man in the car also gave statements to police. They said that they were driving to James's ex-wife's house to borrow, borrow an extension cord for a space heater when James, quote, out of nowhere, was in his truck behind them on the road. He pulled in front of them, blocking them. Uh, Jacob then opened fire, presumably in uh, self defense. A bullet uh, grazed James's forehead, apparently above his right eye. He and Jacob, uh, James and Jacob, were arrested uh, by the Fredericktown police. They were charged with uh, both charged with assault, and they were both held on a one hundred thousand dollar bond. So, just to give you an idea of what the uh, people of Fredericktown, or most of the people in Fredericktown, thought about um, James, 
It says, those advocating for justice for Durante cheered James's arrest online, even though it was unrelated to Durante's case. And a quote from uh, a Fredericktown business owner said, quote, most of the town is happy that he is behind bars. So that just gives you a little insight into what I'm going to assume is probably most of the people of Fredericktown and the surrounding areas thought about uh, James and his actions. If they were cheering for him to be behind bars. So that's, like I said, we're, we're establishing the pattern here of James's behaviors, his ideologies, his violent tendency to violence. Just wanted to give you a background of that. Let me get a drink before we continue. Hopefully my voice will hold out. All right. So there once again is a Durante. Says Durante had always been a big boy. You can see in that uh, that picture there, he definitely uh, is built to be a was built to be a football player. Uh, he got the attention of an as assistant football coach from uh, Park Hill Central High School, who was working uh, at the alternative school that Durante was attending as a freshman because of his spotty attendance records, um, according to uh, head coach Corey Schweiss. And Coach Schweiss had some very good things to say about Durante. He said, uh, quote, so I got it, he got his attendance right. He came over to our school, the um, Park Hill Central High School. Uh, the following year, uh, he, he got in. He started working out with the football team his sophomore year. And then he ended up playing football his junior and senior year um, for this uh, Park Hill Central High School. So he was a good kid. He was uh, getting his attendance right, getting his grades up, playing football, doing uh, everything he could to uh, get that scholarship, um, to do the best that he could. Um, good kid. He was doing uh, all the right things. So his cousin, uh, Isaiah Welch, also played on the team. And he said that football changed their lives. Um, Isaiah said, when we were kids, we used to live in the same trailer park together. He lived right in front of me, so our windows were facing each other. And when our parents fell asleep, we would go to the windows, open up the curtains, and look at each other, and sneak out of the house, and do whatever we wanted to do because we were bad kids. Now, I wouldn't say that they were bad kids. I would say that they were being normal teenagers. You know, I'm not saying all teenagers snuck out windows, but uh, I know I did couple of times when I was a teenager and a lot of teenagers did just because you sneak out doesn't mean that you're you know bad kids um so uh so uh, Isaiah sorry I'm trying to get my notes here Isaiah went on to say football definitely changed us the coaches um and stuff like that just helped us through this life because we did not have it easy growing up on the football field, Durante came alive. Um, it says uh, he could do a lot of things big boys like him couldn't really do. Welch said of his cousin, who was six foot three, 250 pounds. He was fast and he, he could catch the ball. And somebody, I can tell you, I'm a, I'm a football fan. I watched a lot of football. If you're six foot three and 250 pounds and you can move and you can catch a football, you got something going for you. You you can make it playing football at, at the high level. So about a month before his death, uh, Durante stopped by to see his old coach uh, to pick up the patches that his team won uh, with him when he was playing. Uh, coach Schweiss said he was happy. He had a big smile on his face. Um, he says, I asked him how everything was going. He said everything was going great and he was having a good time. So. He was, like I said, he was going to school, getting, the, keeping the grades up, keeping his attendance up, playing football, doing all the right things. So uh, he was uh, described by his family, uh, playful, outgoing, a big kid. And I can see that just with the smile on his face, that smile. In the picture, I don't know if I included it, but the picture of him wearing the bunny rabbit ears for Easter, I love that picture. 
Uh, so he was a former star defensive tackle. He earned a scholarship to a small out of state college. After graduating high school in 2020, he worked at a Walmart store and a restaurant as he worked to bring up his entrance, entrance exam score so he could attend college. But life was, as happens, was changing for Durante. Most of his closest friends from the football team had moved on to college to play football or got jobs. At that time, Durante's SAT scores weren't good enough for him to get into college right after graduation. So his mother said that he was working to improve them so he could play fo football, call, play college football. He, we, like I said, he worked at a local restaurant in Park Hills. Unfortunately, lost the job after the pandemic hit. Like I said, that, that pandemic uh, hurt a lot, hurt a lot of people with jobs. So uh, things were looking up when his family moved to Ferguson. He got his own room for the first time. Uh, they got a new home in Ferguson. And after years of sharing rooms with uh, any number of his siblings, Durante was finally going to have his own room. Miss Erica said that she used some of her stimulus check to buy him uh, all new clothes. Many of them uh, still hang in his closet with the ta tags still attached. Miss Erica said he was so excited showing it off to his friends on video calls, even though there wasn't even any furniture out there yet. So he was happy. They were moving to move to a new place, a new town, a fresh start. He had his own room. He was getting his uh, grades ready to do, take his SATs, to get the fo football scholarship, to go play football at college. Um, everything was looking up. So he had also uh, started spending time with some of his friends that he made at the alternative high school that he had gone to before he moved to uh, Parkland Hills. Um, friends that uh, his mother, Miss Erica, said that she didn't know very well. One of them picked him up from her home on uh, April 23rd. He told his uh, mom that his friend was going to give him a ride to his grandmother, Miss Kimberly, uh, Kimberly's house in the uh, Park Hills. As Kimberly says, he, uh, and I remember in interviews um, that I watched, said that he never came to her house. And Miss Erica said that is the last time that she heard from him. So uh, on April 23rd, Durante left his home with three males after a planned visit with a friend. Uh, Durante had plans, like I said, to be dropped off at his grandma's house, Miss Kimberly's house. One of the men that Durante was with that night was a boy uh, called Adam, named Adam. So a little bit about Adam. Adam was 19. He had a violent past. Um, in 2019, he had pled guilty to fourth degree assault and was given a suspended sentence of two years of unsupervised probation. probation. Um, Adam was charged in early April, and I'm giving you this information because it's going to come into play to as far as what possibly could have been a motive for what happened to Durante. So Adam was charged in uh, early April 2021 with first degree, first degree assault and armed criminal action. He reportedly uh, shot a man in February of 2021. Keep that in mind. Uh, apparently the bullet hit the victim in the stomach area, lodged near his spine, and doctors uh, were unable to remove the bullet due to its location. So I just want to keep keep that in mind. This uh, shooting situation that uh, Adam was charged with. So Durante left the house uh, on a Friday night. His family was worried when they had not heard from him by Saturday. This was unusual for Durante. Um, he always stayed in touch with his family. He knew his mom was going to send him money. And I can't remember if it was, uh, it was, well, it had to be that Saturday, I believe. So he left home on Friday. And once again, Miss Kimberly or Miss uh, Erica, let me know if I'm wrong. That Saturday was when he went to the party. And I'm a, if I'm correct, that Saturday is when they got the call, not from the police, 
from a, another family member that Durante had been killed. So, just referring to my notes to make sure I'm getting this right. So, Durante's grandmother, Miss Kimberly, was then contacted by this uh, family member. Like I said, if I remember correctly, it was maybe a cousin or of Durante. Uh, she was then contacted by this family member. She called the St. Francis Dispatch. They transferred her to Madison County Sheriff's Office. Um, and they gave Durante's grandmother um, the phone number to Fallis Funeral Home. So instead of somebody from the Madison County Sheriff's Office or Fredericktown or whoever was in charge, because I think they were, in my opinion, trying to pass the ball, hand the, you know, that nobody wanted to take responsibility. They uh, put them in touch with the funeral home. There was no death no notification ever made to the, directly to the family. The police never tried to contact Durante's family. The attendant at Fallis Funeral Home told Miss Kimberly that they tried to identify Durante through finger fingerprints, but they said that he did not have any on file. Uh, he had been never been in trouble with police, never been fingerprinted. But his family had submitted his fingerprints using a child ID kit years earlier. So the funeral home went on to tell Kimberly that they identified Durante by taking a picture of him and submitting it to the DMV. Yes, you heard that right. They took a picture of him and sent it to the DMV to try to identify him. So we all know, or we should know, that the process that they use to identify Durante is not how identification is normally done. The steps used by most agencies are they use fingerprints, dental, or DNA, which nobody apparently did. So when the family asked uh, to come and confirm Durante's identity, the funeral home told them they could not come because it was Sunday and they were closed. Now, I've had deaths in the family, in my family, and I we not once had a funeral home tell us that we could not come have a viewing or an identification because it was a Sunday and they were closed. So that blew my mind. So then the excuse for the funeral home not allowing, uh, when that, so that was on the Sunday. So when asked if they could come the next day, which was a Monday, they were told no due to COVID. Now I know back then in 2021, there were restrictions, but come on. You wear a mask, you go in, you identify your loved one. It's that simple. To me, that is a horrible, horrible excuse for not allowing a family member to not be able to come identify their loved one. So then the excuse uh, for the funeral home not allowing identification, confirmation, or release of the body was because they needed to do the autopsy. So the family told the Fallis Funeral Home not to do the autopsy that another funeral home would be picking up, pick Durante up. So Fallis uh, Funeral Home finally released uh, Durante's body on April 29th. This is four days. Um, they finally re re released the body to another funeral home. Just unbelievable. Unbelievable. All right, so now we're going to get in. Uh, so what did happen to Durante? That is the question. So the details of the night Durante uh, was, his life was taken, are not clear. 
what we have to go on or just pieces of information the family were able to put together small amounts of information from the inquest and this information that i'm going to read is from an article that i found um, that had details about um, witness statements and such um, from the inquest and a and a hearsay there's also a hearsay i usually don't like to include hearsay but when when the law enforcement or nobody is releasing any official information sometimes that's all we have to go on so uh, when the three men picked up Bronte, they took him to Fredericktown, which is in Madison County in Missouri. It is a rural town uh, about 27 miles away. It is around 92% white. He, uh, they apparently took him either to a prom. Uh, some accounts said it was a prom party. Other accounts said it was a birthday party. I'm going to lean towards birthday party because that's what is, was in most of the articles. To me, that part is irrelevant. Um, So at approximately 3.01 a.m. on April 25th, Madison County Dispatch received a 911 call from a residence on Route Z regarding a male who had a GSW to the head and was not conscious. Now, this is where I'm going to play the 911 call. And I tried to make it, you may have to turn up whatever device you're listening on when I, I had to uh, screen record it from my phone from the website. Um, I'm going to play it. It's about four minutes long, so I am going to mute my camera and my mic. Um, but if you pay, pay close attention to um, the very beginning and to little things that you can hear in the background. And if you want to listen to this again, um, I got this from the, uh, it is on the Justice for Durante website there are also some youtube videos out there that also play it and has a transcript um, i found a couple of those um, i forgot to link them i believe in the description box but all you have to do is go on youtube search engine to put durante martin in uh, durante martin 911 call in and it will bring up several where it has um the transcript of what's been uh, deciphered and on and on one, I will mention after we watch it on on one part, we'll we'll watch it and uh, or listen to it, and then we'll get into it. All right, so let me back out so I can mute my mic and cam, and I will be back. Let me um, take that down. All right, I will be back. County 911, what's the address of your emergency? Uh, yes, I need the, the cops that and an ambulance. Yeah, apparently a guy just shot himself. You said a guy just shot himself? Yeah. And that, that? Yeah. And that where you are? Yeah. <laughs> Can you hear me? Uh, yeah. Is he breathing at all? Yeah. No. Do you think he's beyond, beyond any help? Do you, do you want to try CPR? Uh, I somehow got in the back of my, uh, okay. Okay, you're cutting down. Uh, hang on a second.
Thank you, yes. He is breathing. Thank you. He's, he's gasping for air, like I said. How old is he, do you know? How old is he, like, maybe 20, 19, 20, 21, somewhere like that. Shout out. All right, in my head. In my head. Or, geez, I can't really see him, but there. Is he alert at all? Is he conscious? Uh, he don't look like it. And when did this happen? About three minutes ago, folks. You said three minutes ago? No, 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 no. Okay, you're hard to hear again. Anyway. You're cutting out, sir. Uh -huh. You're cutting out, I can't understand you. I'm trying to find the spot where I can talk it. Hello? I can hear you now. Okay. Uh, right now I called you. What was your name? Uh, James Lee. Can you hear me? <laughs> Was the 911 call. To me, there are. Now, I don't know. I hope you can hear it clear. Like I said, please do go to uh, Justice for Durante website. That's where I got this from. Listen to it full volume earbuds where you can hear everything that's uh, said in the background. What I hear is, of course, you heard, and the, some of them are on the slide here. Well, first of all, first of all, if it was me, if this ha something like this happened at my house at a party or whatever was going on, I would expect. I mean, it would be pandemonium. There would be. I would expect to hear people yelling and screaming in the background. I would expect the nine one one caller. To not just be kind of lackadaisical and, oh, yeah, somebody apparently, uh, what did he say? Yeah, apparently a guy just shot himself. Very, very laid back, very calm. Now, not, you know, maybe playing devil's advocate a little bit. Um, everybody reacts differently. But you don't hear, I would expect at the very least, in my opinion, in the background, if all these teenagers, young people were there and somebody supposedly took their own life, to me, it would be pandemonium. You would hear yelling, you would hear screaming, you would, you know, just. Uh, the, the, the things that stand out to me is you hear a female saying, um, oh, my God, uh, look at this. I hate this, which you can cl clearly hear that. Um, you can hear, I had to listen to it a few times with my earbuds, but you can hear somebody saying something to the effect of that was crazy. He something, and it, I don't think it's on the slide because this is just a portion of the, um, transcript from the call that was on the, uh, Durante website. But to me, I heard a female voice say he, or Something shot him. Something, something shot him. Now, you can, like I said, feel free to go to the website, listen to it for yourself, decipher it, um, see if you can make anything out. And please, uh, if, you, if you listen to it and hear something different or hear something 
that I haven't heard, um, please, uh, you know, after the live stream, feel free to uh, put a comment in the comment section. Now, the thing you can see there on the right hand of the side of the top, it says a uh, mail to in the background says shut up. I've heard uh, read some interviews and and watched some videos. Some people think that somebody a male is telling maybe the female or somebody to shut up. But there's also because we're going to get to this later on too. It sounds like somebody says John Paul. Now, we'll, like I said, we'll get to this later. But apparently, there was an a, a young man there named uh john paul parton p-a-r-t-o-n i believe is his last name and about three weeks after durante's death um jp john paul uh disappeared and has never been seen again and i do have a video clip um, of that so when i listen to the 911 call it does say in my opinion in my to my ears it does sound like somebody saying john paul it does not sound like somebody saying shut up like i said that's just my opinion um another thing i noticed is supposedly because you heard some uh in some parts of the phone call um it went silent now some of it was when they they uh, blocked out the they muted out the exact address of the house but supposedly the other times that the phone went silent it was because there was bad reception and the, the phone was cutting out which it it possibly could be because lord knows i know about that because i live out in the country in a very rural area um we don't get good uh, cell connection sometimes but then again sometimes it sounds like the phone could be muted being muted purposely on the caller's end on james's end now that i could be totally wrong but um but uh to me that's just a, a, a lot uh, i was gonna say a little red flaggy a lot red flaggy to me at the end the when the uh, dispatcher is trying to get more information from james he just basically hangs up at the end he just hangs up the phone without saying anything after he gives his name and then the dispatcher i uh, was going to ask him another question you can hear james coughing and then he disconnects the phone he hangs up who does that i mean who does that um anyway those are just my thoughts on the uh, 911 call all right, let me go back full screen again so I can read my slides. All right. So now we're going to go into, and this is from the, I'm trying to think of the, it's, it's linked in the, uh, all my sources are linked in the description box. Uh, this is from one of the articles I found that had a very good uh, transcript of uh, witness testimony um, from the uh, coroner's inquest. So first we're going to go over the testimony of the witnesses that were there that night and supposedly their version of what happened. Then we're going to go into, uh, you see I'm going to have a slide with a big question mark on it. We're going to go into other testimony and other things that were said and uh, questions that have been brought up. So when emergency personnel arrived on the scene, Durante was located in the attic area of the residence and he was found uh, deceased. A birthday party had taken place at this home and uh, some of the people who were at the gathering told police that Durante had taken his own life. So uh, Madison County Deputy Nicholas Adams took the stand. He testified about what he saw as one of uh, the first uh, responders on the scene. He recalled arriving uh, at the uh, one and a half story brick house where a man was sitting in a truck near the garage. Now, I do not know, I could not find anywhere in any of the articles that I found who 
the mer the person the man was that was sitting in the truck near the garage it was not james because uh, the deputy said that he entered the home through the rear entrance and was met by the homeowner james who advised him that durante was uh, up in the attic Uh, Deputy Adams said that he had to move some clutter to get to Durante's body, which was in a narrow space in the attic. Now, I've read some accounts say that it was a small makeshift closet. Some say it was just a, a small place in the attic. I cannot, I can find one picture of the attic. I think I included it um, here. Now, I don't know if it's the exact place where they found Durante, but... At any rate, it'll just give you an idea of. So he was found in a narrow space in the attic, facing up with his head tilted back. The deputy located the firearm that was uh, supposedly used next to Durante's head um, in a pool of blood with the muzzle of the gun facing uh, Durante's head. And it says that Deputy Adams said that he immediately secured the weapon. Now, I understand that when you come upon a scene where a firearm is involved, yes, you do normally secure the weapon. But there are other things that were done that we'll get into that definitely are not done, uh, in my opinion, from just from what I know about reading, being around law enforcement, watching uh, lots of police uh, shows to know how to secure a crime scene. So this is the only picture that I could find, and I found it just on Google search, uh, but it was, apparently it was uh, from Facebook. Like I said, I, don't, I do not know if this was the place where, the exact place where Durante was found, but it just gives you an idea of what the uh, attic looked like. And just furthers my opinion that why would, if, just if, Durante, for some reason, and I don't believe that he would, in my opinion, but for some reason, unknown reason, if Durante was going, did for some reason want to take his own life, why would he do it in a house that he had never been in before, up in an attic? Where did the gun come from? And we'll get into that in a little bit about where the gun supposedly came from up in this little attic just i mean people who take their own lives in my experience because i do have a family member that i lost to uh, that took their own life normally if somebody is going to take their own life they're going to do it in a familiar place that they know in their home um in a vehicle out in the the woods somewhere or some some place that they know that is special to them that is comfortable to them you would not in my opinion you would not do it and like i said i in my opinion i don't believe for one second that durante took his own life you would not do it in out in the middle of nowhere with people you don't know in a place that you've never been to in an attic but like i said that is uh, just my opinion feel free in chat or in the uh, comments if you're uh, watching replay let me know what you guys think so the jury uh heard from uh, witnesses uh with and, and written statements from people who had attended this party um held for uh james's uh, daughter 18 year old daughter laney uh several had similar accounts of seeing durante that night they described him his behavior as paranoid acting strange According to one statement uh, before the party, the witness recalled Durante repeatedly saying, I can't do this. Now, when we get to, uh, to testimony about uh, toxicology, apparently, allegedly, there was substances found uh, in Durante's system. And that's a whole, that's a whole other red flag to me too. 
And I just bring this up because they say they gave the excuse that Durante, the reason he was acting paranoid and strange was because he had ingested these substances. Now, to me, I don't know. I wasn't there. I don't know. Durante, from everything I've read, was not known to have ever, you know, not known to use drugs or substances. Um, there is was um, talk or that he was afraid that somebody was going to be there. Once again, pay attention to the beginning when I was talking about who some of the people were that he that brought that he brought him to, down to this place and was at the party with him. There was talk that um, he was afraid that a certain person would be there um, that might do something to him for a certain reason. And he's saying, I can't do this. And then you have to take into consideration, too. He is the only black person, person of color, in the house of a known white supremacist with people that he does not know except for the friends or whoever it was that took him to this party did he even know that he was where they were taking him to did he know that this is where he was going to end up did they these friends tell him that this is what they were going to do or did they just say hey get in the car and go with us so So Carrie, who is apparently another daughter of James, testified that she was in and out of the house the night of the party, checking on her sister, assumably uh, Lainey, whoever the party was for. She said that she saw Durante hanging out with Zachary, uh, two uh, people called uh, Zachary and Cody. I'm not going to say the names, but you can read them there, on, the last names, but you can read them there on the slide. Uh, she said later that Durante had gone upstairs and at one point someone told her to be careful because some guy was passed out in the closet in the attic, referring to uh, Durante, allegedly. And uh, she said that someone also told her that Durante had a gun. So where did he get this gun? I've read that somebody at the party and I'm I know it's in the, uh, the slides coming up. Supposedly somebody, one of these two gentlemen, I believe, had uh, supposedly given Durante a firearm um, be to make him feel more safe in this situation. Being at this house, with at James's house, knowing his history. But where did this gun, gun come from? That's one of the big questions. And at the end, we're going to have... Uh, Something that was really uh, thought very interesting on the uh, Justice for Durante website. They had 10 questions, and we're going to go over those 10 questions. So, where did this gun come from? Whose gun was it? We don't know. So, another witness named uh, Nathan had been in and out of the house with Carrie that night. Nathan testified that he, at some point, looked into the attic and saw Durante with the firearm. He said that uh, Zachary and Cody were talking to Durante for a short time and telling him not to hurt himself. Now, we don't know if this is true. This is the testimony they gave. Does not necessarily mean it's true. Just saying. So Zachary, I hope I'm getting the names right. Zachary took the stand and he testified that Durante seemed normal earlier in the night. Uh, Zachary, who reportedly was living at uh, this residence at the time, said that uh, Durante began acting scared that a specific person would show up at the house. Now, I don't know who this, and I'm sure Miss Kimberly or Miss uh, Erica can tell them, you know, put in chat, put in comments who this uh, specific person was. Um, so Zachary said that he later saw Durante laying down uh, with the firearm to his head. 
He said that he asked Durante why he had the firearm to his head, but Durante didn't say anything, allegedly. Uh, Zachary said that he left the house. So, Zachary said that he left the house after witnessing Durante GSW himself to the head. So, we have allegedly, supposedly, I've heard one witness. So, this Zachary testified. But I've heard, read, once again, Miss Kimberly or Miss Erica can correct me, that there could have been up to three people in the attic when Durante allegedly took his own life. So, uh, a fellow named Michael was also at the party and testified that around 3 a.m. he heard a gunshot while he was sitting on the couch um, downstairs, I'm assuming in the living room area, sitting next to James. And uh, after he heard the gunshot, he said, quote, they came down and said he shot himself and we all left. Got to get a drink on this one. So, my question is, and I'm not laughing, I'm just laughing to keep from crying or pulling my hair out. If somebody, and, and I understand that if you, you saw somebody do what uh, Don, uh, Durante allegedly did, yeah, you might, you're going to freak out and you may run downstairs. But from what I take from this statement that said we all left, they left the house. Why would you leave the house? Maybe you go outside and you call 911. It just, I don't, you know, I may be misinterpreting this statement, but when they say we all left, and I think I have read in articles once again that. People did leave. They scattered. So uh, James testified that he got to his house the night of his uh, the birthday party about 20 minutes before hearing the gunshot. His story was it was uh, around 2, 2.30. He was out um, fishing, which I have heard of not fishing. I have done some not fishing in my, you know, younger days. Uh, my parents, when uh, we were kids, my parents did what we call night fishing because we owned a reservoir. Um, and they would go out and build a campfire and night fish and do a little drinky drinking. And so uh, James's story was that he had been out all night, all early morning, uh, night fishing. He got home. He was there about 20 minutes and uh, he heard the gunshot. So, uh, Trooper Shannon Sitton had interviewed uh, Cody, who reportedly told him that he, that Cody, had given Durante the uh, firearm at the party to feel safe. And that's what we were talking about earlier, to feel safe. Apparently, he, uh, Dante, Dante, sorry, Durante was afraid that somebody was going to show up, possibly, a certain person. And once again, he was in a house when we've uh, covered the uh, situation that he was in, the kind of people that he was around. So uh, Cody told investigators that he attempted to talk to Durante that night uh, when Durante was in the attic, but he was unsuccessful. So he went and got the Zachary guy to come help. Uh, Cody, uh, interestingly, Cody. The person who said that he gave Durante uh, the firearm, he was subpoenaed to testify at this coroner's uh, inquest, but he did not show up to testify. So, take that as you will. So, this is where we get uh, to an interesting bit of information. So, uh, a female named Morgan was the last witness to testify. She said that she had arrived at the party after leaving work around 10 p.m. She says, and I'm going to give the full name on this name I'm fixing to give because it's come up in another case, in the Timmy D's case. 
So she said this Morgan uh, said that she was sitting on a bed talking to Bobby Boone when Durante came into the room and yelled at specifically at Bobby Boone saying you set me up before exiting the room quickly. So I don't know when I did Timmy's case, if I specifically mentioned Bobby Boone's name. I do know that from all the research I did, her name came up quite a bit in Timmy's case. So I just find it very red flaggy, very interesting, very disturbing that we have another case, once again, from Fredericktown of a person losing their life. In Timmy's case, supposedly he just went crazy, you know, was paranoid. Once again, same story. He was paranoid, acting strangely. He took off running and he just, something happened and he just laid down and passed away. Once again, like I said, Bobby Boone's name came up several times in Timmy's case. And now we have again, we have Durante. He's at this house he's never been at before with most of the people he doesn't know and a house he doesn't know acting paranoid and, and strange suppose you know allegedly doing substances and he decides in a strange place in an attic to take his own life after or before or after um confronting uh bobby boone and saying you set me up so like i said I don't know. I can't. I wasn't there, um, but I'm just making the connection with this Bobby Boone being connected to two, the first two of many uh, Fredericktown cases that I'm probably going to share. She's come up so far in both cases. So, all right. Now, so that was the testimony allegedly, you know, from what allegedly happened from the people that were there. So now we come to the questions and the other testimony um, from other witnesses. So uh, Durante's toxicology results were reviewed. Allegedly, they showed that he had uh, 650 NG, I don't know what NG is, uh, ML, I'm assuming is milliliters of a substance which a uh, good old Dedeker said was, uh, and I just bring this up because it, it says that 650 uh, milliliters was in the toxic range and could cause irrational thinking. And the results also showed THC metabolites, and I believe THC is found in uh, the Mary Jane. So I'm wondering, because what you know, like I said, I wasn't there. I don't know. Did Durante knowingly take substances, or was he maybe because I don't know. I know that you can put the uh, F, the Finney. Um, I know that Mary Jane joints can be laced with the F. Now, I don't know if it can be laced with the M, the meth. Um, was he, was Durante given something unknowingly that he didn't know he was taking? Um, to me, that is a distinct possibility, in my opinion. Uh, so Robbins uh, asked Dedeker if any other injuries were found during the autopsy. And, of course, he noted that uh, Durante's right hand was in the cast uh, due to a previous unrelated injury. So remember, uh, we talked about earlier, uh, his right arm from uh, his fingertips to uh, his elbow was in the cast. Uh, his right arm was, he was right-handed. It was his dominant arm. And he supposedly used the firearm with his left hand. With, I think it's going to mention in the, one of the other slides, um, that with the amount of this substance that he allegedly had in his system, it would have been toxic, could have caused death, and that with that, that amount of substance in the system, it will be impossible for him to even hold the firearm and be able to allegedly take his own life. So we've got that. 
one of many questions. So we have the, the uh, 911 call we've listened to. Um, James states very calmly, uh, apparently a guy shot himself. Uh, you can hear a, a girl's voice saying, I hate this. And this says a girl also says, oh, my God, they shot him, which what I can understand of it. I hear something, something shot him. Now, whether it says, oh, my God, they or what, but I can hear something, something shot him. Uh, so the first question asked by dispatcher, if Durante was beyond help, uh, James responded he wasn't breathing. He went on to say he couldn't see Durante. Uh, he then says uh, what sounds like, uh, Zach, is he breathing? Uh, it cuts it off, but on the 911 call, uh, James tells the dispatcher that he, they said that he's gasping for air. Um, I think the dispatcher asked him if he was beyond help or if he wanted to do CPR. Uh, James apparently wasn't interested in doing any kind of uh, CPR or, or uh, life saving um, for Durante. So uh, the gun, the firearm was later brought to the witness stand by another deputy. Uh, the deputy testified that it did have blood on the side of its slide. A residue test was performed on, uh, allegedly, was performed on Durante's left hand, and it did show um, lead and barium were detected, which the deputy said indicated that a gun was fired at close range. Now, to me, that says, in my opinion, that does not necessarily mean that Durante was the one that fired the gun. If this uh, Cody or whoever it was gave him, had given him the gun allegedly earlier in the night, you can, just from what I have understand from watching police shows and learning from Mr. Steve at True Crime Web, you can just hold a gun. You don't have to fire it. And if that gun has been fired before, it's going to leave residue on your hand. Or another possibility. Don't want to be too graphic. Another possibility is if somebody else, most likely, if somebody else shot the gun at Durante, it could be that he put up your instinct if you see somebody pointing a gun at you is if you're going to put your hands up. And if it's fired at, it just says it's fired at close range. Um, that can also. From what I understand, that's how you can get residue on your hand. So just because Durante had residue GSR on his hand does not necessarily mean he was the one that fired. I say that's just my unexpert opinion, but just from listening to experts who know these things. Uh, so another witness statement, and this once again is from the uh, coroner's inquisition. Another witness statement alleged that three people, including alleged, I have to say allegedly, allegedly James had taken Durante's life. They, it was homicide. But uh, Deputy Adams said that this allegation was not supported by any evidence. So take that with a grain of salt. Take it how you will. Uh... Graham Zachary, I believe, is took the stand and testified that Durante seemed uh, normal normal earlier in the night. Uh, Zachary, who reportedly was living at uh, James's residence at the time, said that Durante began acting scared that a specific person would show up at the house. So we're back to this specific person. So, uh, Robbins, who is the, uh, I don't know what you call him. I don't know it'd be a prosecutor or whoever was asking the questions, uh, called, uh, a man named Philip to the stand. This Philip stated that sometime after the night of Durante's death, he spoke to James at a Walmart. And this Philip said that James made remarks about disliking black people. He used racial, sl racial slurs. And he told uh, this Philip, quote, he did it. 
referring James, James allegedly said, quote, that he did it, referring to shooting Grante. Uh, this Philip also testified that James said, um, the quote, uh, this murder, this, uh, I'm going to have to say the, uh, I'm going to have to say the homicide, but you can read it, said that this homicide is the easiest thing to get away with. So we have that statement. Uh, so James did take the stand. He did admit to using the racial slurs, but he obviously uh, denied um, saying that he had shot Durante. He said uh, that he was asking this other fellow for help in case a protest that was planned near his house got violent. He also admitted to telling this other fellow that he, quote, could have uh, shot him and got less heat from his people than I'm getting for trying to help. Well, in my opinion, uh, James Fella didn't do a whole lot to try to help in the first place, so I don't know what he meant by that statement, but that's just my opinion. So now we're going to get to uh, some theory or some uh, possible motive. So uh, Morgan, the female that was uh, talking to Bobby Boone that night when uh, Durante came in and said to uh, to uh, Bobby Boone, I know you set me up. So Morgan was asked about comments that her brother Blake made regarding his thoughts on what happened to Durante that night. So Morgan said that her brother believed that Zachary had shot Durante for snitching about a previous incident that reportedly took place at the house a few weeks earlier. So remember the name, and I'm assuming uh, that it refers to the uh, incident with Adam that we talked about earlier, the shooting incident. I'm not 100% certain, but once again, Miss Kimberly or Miss Erica can correct me if I'm wrong. So just some questions, and this came from, um, it was called um, Hometown Horrors. It was a WordPress a blog that somebody did. Um, a link to it is in the description box. You can read the whole thing. But just some points that whoever wrote this um, made that I thought were very interesting and that I agreed with. It says the area where Dronte was found was described as a closet space attic. Uh, description sounds like a very small closed off area that is dark. Um, James mentioned the 911 call that he could not see, which makes uh, this person who brought this sink that there was not any electricity in the attic area. So, as I said earlier, this person who wrote this blog or this article said, so why would a happy, content young man with a promising future go to a party that he was not invited to at a known white supremacist racist household go in a dark attic and take his own life to me that does not seem likely or reasonable at all but once again that is just my opinion another very very disturbing thing when the police arrived on the scene the scene had already been cleaned up and apparently a picture of it was posted on snapchat who does that? For one, you should not ever do anything. You should move away from the scene. Go outside if you have to. Call 911. Don't touch anything. But apparently, before the police arrived, maybe before the police were even called, I don't know, the scene was cleaned up and a picture of it was posted on Snapchat. Then... We know that the police got there. The policeman uh, in the earlier said that he uh, secured the gun. He removed the gun, took the gun to his car. We don't know. I know there's protocol that you're supposed to use when you're removing a weapon, um, possibly the uh, or the weapon for either a self-harm or homicide. There's certain things you're supposed to do. and how you're supposed to handle it and where you're supposed to put it and tag it and log it and all that good stuff. Don't know if that was done. 
police did not fingerprint the gun. So I definitely know you're supposed to fingerprint the gun. They stated that gun residue was found on Durante's left hand, but Durante, we know, was right handed. And that he had recently, once again, had the surgery and his right hand was in a full cast. And then we know that a uh, good old uh, Dedeker ruled Durante's death uh, self harm. So, Madison County Police Department posted that Durante. Um, Passed away by self harm before anything was verified. Um, and there were claims that were made on the Madison County Police Department's Facebook page that James uh, had a history of hosting parties uh, with underage drinking and substances involved. Uh, it was also rumored, once again, this is just a rumor, allegedly, um, it was alleged that um, James dealt substances. Um, then we mentioned that another young man died of an apparent uh, self-harm on Wade's property. And that was uh, Christopher Lowry. So we have that. So apparently, and we'll get into this uh, polygraph test because that is one of the 10 questions. Apparently, James uh, passed a polygraph test, but we all know how uh, unreliable Polygraph tests are, um, they are inadmissible in court. And also, from what I have read, the polygraph test was not given by a person that was certified to give polygraph, to do polygraph test. It was actually done by a deputy who was not certified. And then we have the uh, statement from uh, James's daughter, and I don't know which one, I'm assuming it is Laney. So she made a social media post stating that there was not a party and no alcohol. But in the same post, she also said that Durante wasn't invited to the party and wasn't supposed to be there. So was there a party or was there not a party? Just, just asking. These are questions. These are questions that this person had and that I have. Uh... So this is where we get to the part I was talking about the amount of substances that were uh, allegedly found in Durante's system. So uh, Dedeker ruled uh, Durante's death a self-harm despite evidence that pointed to homicide. This substance was found in Durante's system during his autopsy. Although Durante had never been known to use uh, substances, the amount of substance found in his system was said to be such a large amount that it would, would have caused confusion, psychosis, and death. And it says uh, the amount of substance in his system would have made it impossible for him to have the coordination to hold and pull the trigger on a gun. So there you have it. Uh, so we went over uh, Durante's family, hired Dr. Jane Turner uh, for a second autopsy. She is a forensic pathologist. She reported a gunshot entrance wound uh, to the left temple. Uh, she said there was no soot or stippling present, which would indicate that it was held directly to the forehead, which if somebody self-harms themselves that way, they usually put it either very close or right up to usually um, their temple. So this means uh, the barrel of the gun was not pressed against the skin. Uh, the entrance wound was a distant uh, wound from two to three feet away in her estimation. And it says there is no corresponding exit wound. So the question I have is they didn't even fingerprint the gun, which to me, who knows if they secured it properly when they took it from the scene. They didn't fingerprint it. Did they, because, and once again, not to get too graphic, um, if there was no exit wound, that would lead me to believe that the bullet was still in the, the head. Did they remove the bullet to match it to the gun that was supposedly used? Do they even know if the bullet matched the gun that was supposedly used? I have all my research that I looked at. 
I cannot find that information. That is a question I have. Um, because it could very easily be somebody, you know, this uh, Cody or Zachary or whichever one it was that supposedly gave this weapon, a firearm to Durante. Who knows if that is actually the firearm that was used? I have questions about that. Big questions. But once again, I'm not an expert. That's just things that, uh, questions that I have. All right. So I hope you guys are still with me. <laughs> I know this is, a, this has been a long one, but I wanted to get as much, all this information that I could, um, to you guys in a way that I hope is uh, understandable. Now, I know for sure that Miss Kimberly and, uh, Miss Erica know the details inside and out, but, so we're going to go back to, and I do have a, once again, a video a clip that I'm going to play. Um, we're going to go back to, I mentioned John Paul or JP Parton. Who disappeared. I think it was about three weeks. Yes. Three weeks after Durante, uh, after his death, after Durante was killed. And supposedly this uh, John Paul JP was at the party. And in my opinion, uh, this is just my opinion in the 911 call, it sounds like somebody, you know, some people say they hear shut up. I hear John Paul. And it has been said from other people who have listened to it that they can hear John Paul. So. Once again, um, let me back out and I'm going to mute my camera and my mic and play this. Uh, I think it's maybe a minute and a half, two minute um, video clip. The mystery surrounding a party where a young man died from a gunshot wound has deepened. One of the witnesses disappeared just weeks after the death with Authorities are calling a suicide and then a jury called a death by violence. The I-team's Christine Byers has been following the story since it began more than two years ago and tonight has a family's plea for answers. Durante Martin was just 19 years old when he died from a gunshot wound to his head. It happened here in April of 2021 at a party in Fredericktown, Missouri. John Paul Parton, also 19 at the time, was there when it happened. Madison County 911, what's the address of your emergency? Uh, apparently, a guy just shot his head. You can hear someone yell his name, John Paul, during the 911 call, which the I team obtained. John Police initially ruled Durante's death a suicide. His family insisted Durante, who is black, was murdered at the home. It hurts my heart to know that somebody hurt my grandson. And possibly because of the color of his skin. Three weeks later, John Paul Parton disappeared. The Jefferson County Sheriff's Office says it doesn't know if his disappearance is connected to Durante's death or the party at the home. I miss him with all my heart. The last day the Partons saw their son was May 16th, 2021. They admit they've fallen apart since then. And they can't stop thinking about what he told them that morning about the party where his friend Durante died. He said he was there, that it was not a suicide, it was a murder. Two months later, the jury in a coroner's inquest agreed. It determined Durante died by violence. That conflicts with the Missouri Highway Patrol investigation, which found no evidence of foul play. And the homeowner and several others who were at that party also testified that it was a suicide. John Paul wasn't among them. His family had already filed a missing persons report. We just want to know. And one day it'll all come out. The Bartons also say their son told them he had burglarized a business with a few of his friends the day he went missing. They also wonder whether a disagreement between them could have led to their son's disappearance. If you have any information about this case, call the Jefferson County Sheriff's Department at 636-797-5000. For the I-Team, Christine Byers, five on your side. All right, so. Get my slides back up here. County nine one one. What's the address oh. of your emergency? Oh, sorry, wrong one. Hold on. There we go. Okay. So, 
What do you guys think of that? My opinion is just a little bit suspicious. Now, granted, it could could have something to do with um, you heard the parents say that he uh, John Paul uh, said that he had uh, done some burglaries and it could have had something to do with that. But in my opinion, I mean, I know these days, unfortunately, kids and young people um, take another person's life for the stupidest things. But in my opinion, this is just my opinion. Feel free to put in chat or uh, comments if you're watching replay. To me, it would make more sense um, and is more suspicious that John Paul disappeared just three weeks after that he was supposedly at uh or said he was told his parents that he was at the uh party the house the night that durante was killed and that he it was a homicide it wasn't self-harm and then three weeks later he disappeared to me it would make more sense that that could possibly alleg allegedly i have to say allegedly because i don't know can't prove anything um it would make more sense that he would disappear because of something that he might have seen at uh, the house that night when Durante uh, passed. But once again, that's just my opinion. Feel free um, to let me know in chat what you guys think. All right, we're almost done here. Then we'll start getting to uh, questions and comments. I know uh, there's probably lots and lots of questions and comments. Um, I have one more video clip to play. So we know that the um, the uh, jury at the coroner's inquest did rule uh, in their opinion that it was uh, violence. Um, it was uh, not self-harm, it was not an accident, it was violence, a.k.a. homicide. So uh, I don't think this clip is very long. I'll just leave my camera. of six about two hours to determine Durante Martin's death was no suicide. I feel rejoiced. I am so glad I am happy that they sang through all their lies and they sought the truth that my baby did not kill herself. The prosecutor, coroner, and investigators involved in this proceeding wouldn't go on camera, but the Madison County prosecutor told the I-team he asks for coroner's inquests when there are questions about how someone died. It's a proceeding that happens in counties that don't have medical examiners. There's no question Durante Martin died from a gunshot wound to his left temple. But the jurors in this case, which included one black man, one white man, and four white women, had to determine today how it happened. Was it by suicide? Was it by accident? Was it natural causes? Or by violence? A total of 26 witnesses were called, including James Wade, who owns the home where the shooting happened. Durante was there for Wade's daughter's 18th birthday party. Jurors also heard from paramedics, highway patrol investigators, and Madison County deputies. Troopers and the county's pathologists said they believed it was a suicide. Justice for Durante Martin! As a handful of people gathered with Durante's mother and grandmother outside the courthouse, they still believe Durante's death may have been racially motivated. We don't have the answers to who. Who did it? We don't have the answers to why they did it. But one thing for sure and two things for certain, God ain't through yet. The verdict means the investigation is not over. With enough evidence, prosecutors could still charge someone in Durante's death. I think it's it's a start, but there's a lot, lot further we have to go with this. We got to figure out what really happened, why it happened. In Fredericktown for the ice. All right. So. There we go. Okay. Sorry, I'm trying to get my double duty here. There we go. Nope, wrong one. So, as you can see, the, like I said, the uh, inquest, the jury, uh, obviously found that it was violence but to this day um nobody has been held accountable or there has not even been a further investigation even though the jury um i believe 
don't know if I have a, made a slide of it, but the jury said that they couldn't say who did it for sure, but that they said that there definitely should be an investigation done, which to my knowledge to this day, three year, almost three years later has not been done. So who are the possible suspects? Like I said, these are just, nobody has formally been charged, named a person of interest or a suspect. These are just uh, speculation. Like I said, I don't usually speculate on here, but in this case, we've got some, uh, some good candidates. So uh, this is once again from the Hometown Horrors um, blog, WordPress blog. The person who wrote this uh, had possible theories and the uh, suspects that I tend to uh, agree with. So uh, Adam, who we talked about um, in the beginning, was one of the ones that, if I'm correct, that came to pick up Durante to take him down to Fredericksburg and ended up taking him to this uh, party. Uh, he's the one that had the history of assault charges. Uh, he was one of the people who picked up Durante that night. It is said that uh, Adam believed that Durante snitched on him about the February 2021 uh, shooting that he was charged with. Now, from everything I've read, in no way, shape, or form did Durante ever go to police, law enforcement, or anybody and give any kind of information to the effect that Adam was, you know, anything to do with this shooting. So where this rumor came from about Durante supposedly snitching on Adam, I don't know where it came from, but apparently it wasn't true. Uh, we obviously have uh, James for all the uh, obvious reasons. Um. He was a known uh, white supremacist, uh, used, used, used uh, racial slurs and put filthy, disgusting things uh, on his Facebook page. He was uh, unconcerned, uh, seemingly unconcerned and about having a deceased person in the attic of his home. Um, it was an inconvenience to him. He showed no compassion or desire to help Durante. We all heard that, or in my opinion, just from his tone of voice and his manner on the 911 call that shows that he was, he wasn't faced. He wasn't concerned. He did. He showed no desire to render aid. Um, so that's just one, like I said, that's speculation. Um, there is a theory once again, that Durante's homicide was premeditated. Uh, the people, once again, this is just a theory, rumor, speculation. The people who picked him up that night intended to take him to uh, James's house and take his life. The motive, once again, could go back to the belief that Durante had snitched on this Adam guy or for some other reason that nobody was aware of. So just to recap, what do we have? We have... Uh, we know that Durante was taken uh, to this birthday party on April 24th um, in Fredericktown to James's home. Details of what happened at the party and the uh, events that followed remain unclear. That's evident. We have the suspicious 911 call. We have the rushed autopsy and the suspicious cause of death. Um, was it self-harm, uh, in my opinion? This is just my opinion. No, it wasn't. Um, for one, for reasons I've already stated, if, if Durante or anybody is going to self-harm themselves, they would not do it. In my opinion, they would not do it in an unfamiliar house with people that you didn't know up in an attic with, you know, it's just to me and with and in not using his uh, dom his uh, dominant hand was in a cast. Um, to me, it, I'll just say it's highly unlikely in my opinion. Then we have the results of the uh, coroner's inquisition. The jury said uh, it was violence. It wasn't self-harm. It wasn't um, an accident. So we have that. 
So now we have the 10 questions and I promise I think this is the last one except for information that I'm going to give you of how you can get involved um, if you choose to do so um, in helping things you can do um, to help. So number one, why didn't the sheriff's office call Durante's family to notify him of his death? To me, that is the one of the right up there at the top why did they they never the police themselves never contacted miss kimberly miss erica none of Dante's family directly that is that is standard operating procedure is you make the death notification either you should actually do it in person but if that's not possible you at least call the part you call the family they never did that. They never even attempted to do that. Um, two, um, how did uh, Durante end up in James Wade's attic? That is a question. Um, in my opinion, he was scared for his life. This is just my opinion. Um, we have uh, him saying that he can't do this. We have him confronting Bobby Boone and saying, um, Uh, Durante confronted Bobby Boone and said, you set me up. He was, uh, it was stated that he was afraid that a certain specific person was going to be there that night. Uh, there's a theory that, um, the rumor that Durante supposedly snitched on, uh, this Adam guy. To me, um, that in my opinion, that's all indications of he knew something was up. He, feared something was up he feared that his he was uh, in trouble that something bad was going to happen and maybe he went up in the attic to hide i don't know to try to get away um like i said it's just there's all we have to go on is the uh statements of the of the people that were there and then the other statements um from the other witnesses from um, John Paul Parton um, who disappeared three weeks later. The uh, fella that was said that he was in a Walmart with uh, James and my James made these statements that uh, he did it and blah, blah, blah. And it was easy to get away with. And uh, All right. Number three, who owned the uh, firearm used to take Garante's life? Where did it come from? Supposedly, uh, was it Cody, the Cody that gave it to him? Supposedly for protection to make Dante, Durante feel safer. I still question if they did not recover that bullet and test it or compare it to see if it was fired from that gun that supposedly was used. I have questions if it was even from the same gun, but that's just me. Um. Why were there so many wildly different reports of what happened the other night um, from party goers? Um, number five, um, supposedly a uh, substance was found in Durante's system despite no prior history of uh, substance use. Was James's house searched for substances? We uh, mentioned earlier it was rumored that, just a rumor, that um, substances were being sold out of that house. Uh, number, uh, number six, why were, yeah, why are young people at uh, James's house ending up deceased? That's the question. Durante was the second one. We know there was at least one more before that. <laughs> Who knows if there are others? Uh, another big one, number seven, did the sheriff's office treat um, the home as a crime scene, knowing it had been the site of another alleged self-harm a few years prior. Well, apparently it was cleaned up before the police were even called. We don't know if they secured the gun properly. It was not finger. The gun was not fingerprinted. So I don't have faith that the crime scene was, uh, in my opinion, that the crime scene was treated like a crime or the house was treated like a crime scene. 
one thing um, that I didn't put in the slide, but that was mentioned in articles, um, why was Durante's phone missing data when uh, it says law enforcement finally returned it to his family? But Miss Kimberly or Miss Erica can answer if they're still here. I thought I re uh, heard in an interview, maybe with Miss Kimberly, that uh, it was one of the friends that actually brought the phone back to them back to Miss um, Kimberly or Miss Erica and that the contacts have been wiped out. The texts have been wiped out. Everything. The phone had basically been wiped, um, deleted. Um, so I have questions, uh, obviously big questions about that. Um, number nine, why was uh, James's polygraph administered to him by a highway patrol trooper instead of a certified polygraph examiner? We went over that. And number 10, the biggest one, why is the Missouri Highway Patrol seemingly ignoring the jury's 2021 ruling that Durante died by um, violence and not self-harm? All valid questions. Like I said, th these come from the uh, Justice for Durante website, which is done by change.org. Um, I encourage you, I watched many um, YouTube videos. I think it was. Uh, Roland Martin, a uh, Roland S. Martin YouTube channel um, interviewed a representative from change.org who is representing um, Dante's case. Uh, very good information. Um, there was also, oh, I'm trying to think of the lady's name. Uh, the Journal of Stephanie, um, I forget the last name, but she did an interview with Miss um, Kimberly and Miss Erica. Uh, the Journal of Stephanie, I want to say flowers. I don't know if that's correct. Um, I'm sure, um, once again, Miss Kimberly and Miss Erica can tell me. Um, watch that. Um, very good information. Um, I got a lot of good information from that um, interview with Miss Kimberly and Miss Erica. All right. So if you choose, what can you do to help? For one thing, um, share this video. And for anyone, um, we're at the end of the presentation part. After um, I give this information, we're going, I'm going to go start going through the comments for comments and questions. So anybody that is uh, either watching now live or watching, um, the replay, uh, thank you. If you don't want to stick around for the question and comments um, portion of the show, thank you so much for watching. Please give this uh, video a uh, live stream a thumbs up. Most importantly, share, share, share. Share it to anywhere, everywhere you can. Friends, family, true crime groups you're in, social media. Share it everywhere you can to get Durante's story out to as many people as possible. So. With that said, thank you very much for watching. Um, before you let go, um, the first thing, one thing you can do, um, you can demand an independent investigation. Tell the Department of Justice to uncover the truth about Durante's death. Um, you can call the U.S. Department of Justice Civil Rights Division at 202-514-3847 or 1-855-856-1247. Or you can email them at civil rights division at usdoj.gov. Uh, Second thing you can do, report Durante's death to the FBI Hate Crimes Division. You can call the Missouri office at 314-589-2500. You can call the national office at 1-800-CALL-FBI, which is 1-800-225-5324. Or you can uh, submit online tips at tips.fbi.gov. So you can share, 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 share this video or not just my, my video. Any video about Durante's story you find anywhere. There are lots on YouTube. Share them, share them, share them to get Durante's story out there. If you would choose to do so, you can um, do this. I'm going to leave these two um, things up on the screen. Um, while I'm doing comments and questions. Um, guys, we got to get this story out there. There needs to be some resolution, some investigation. Um, something needs to be done. 
All right, with that said, let me get a drink. And we will start getting into the questions and comments. Actually, before we do that, I'm going to mute my camera and my mic for a minute, and I will be right back, I promise. Talk amongst yourselves. I'll be back. Okay, I'm back. Get my camera going here in a minute. All right, let me start going through questions and comments. Welcome in, everybody that I missed. Thank you. Junior Johnson says, God bless you, Erica and Barbara. Yes, and Miss Marion and Miss uh, Erica or Miss uh, Kimberly. Just trying to get down there. Shauna said he looks so young. I don't know if you're talking about um, Durante or um, one of the missing. Yes, Durante. Oh, I just keep seeing that sweet, sweet, infectious smile. Oh, God. I, I would have loved to have known Durante in all, in all sincerity. Um, he would be the kind of person that I'd like to hang out with. And you tell just by that smile and that personality shines through. Yeah, that's true. Um, Arctic Fox True Crime says, uh, going back to the uh, missing that I featured, uh, so many missing from Van Buren. It's a small town. Yeah, there. And every time I read, because they, I get those from the um, uh, uh, Morgan Nick Foundation website. Um, people are making comments about uh, why there's so many kids um, that are missing from Van Buren. They say a lot of them are runaways that are um, on probation or GV or something, but you never know. I'm trying to get down to the uh, questions and yep, Shauna says this is terrible. Yes, ma'am. It is. It's horrible. <laughs> I'm sorry for um for sniffing. I was trying to blow my nose a while ago. Exactly. Um, Arctic says, uh, and if for anybody that's uh, here now that wasn't here earlier, definitely check out Arctic Fox True Crime. He does a wonderful uh, job. Plus, he's a fellow Arkansan. I'm from Arkansas too, so 
Um, but he says it was a racially motivated um, homicide, in my opinion. I, I agree with you. Most definitely, Arctic. Most definitely. Look, see, uh, says horrible. Absolutely. Yep, Miss Barbara says, I know. Um, sorry, Eric, it's hard to see and talk about. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's just so heart heart wrenching to it, it it to me it's heart wrenching to have to do these kind of cases anyway. But when I know that there are family members in chat that are listening, it just it breaks my heart even more for them to have to relive it. Um, but I'm I'm so honored and so glad that um, Miss Kimberly and Miss Erica are here um, to uh, and know that um, hopefully they know that I'm doing uh, the best I can to uh, get Durante's story out there um, to make more as many people as possible aware of this situation. And uh, hopefully something uh, maybe here in our little village that we got going, it takes a village um, that we can make a little bit of a difference, um, at least um, in as far as awareness, making people aware. And uh, like I said, maybe the I'm leaving these two actions uh, up here that if you choose to do so, um, to to help and uh the best thing you can do to help also is i can't say it enough share 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 this video share any video that you come across on youtube or wherever about Dorante's case and uh, share it anywhere and everywhere that you can absolutely miss marion says we will get justice in frederick town missouri yep and th these two cases um Timmy's case, Timmy D's case, and uh, Dronte's case, these are just two of many um, that I will be featuring from Fredericktown. It's just um, unbelievable what's going on up there. And I say up there because, um, like I said, I'm in Arkansas, so Missouri's above me. But it's just un mind-blowing, unreal. Absolutely. Um, Nan says, I'm so very sorry. He looks like a beautiful young man. Absolutely. uh shauna says is this a small town oh i remember reading the and somebody um, probably answered it further down in the comments um i read the at one point i did read the population but i can't i think it's a fairly small town but then again i live in a town that's less than 2000 so who am i to who am i to judge what uh what people consider small towns um yep you knew said yes it is a small town and, and miss kimberly said yes yep shauna says so a small town investigation also i'd assume well in my opinion <laughs> there wasn't you know once again this is just my opinion but um there wasn't excuse me um uh, much of an investigation um and I believe once again, um, it was maybe initially it was Madison County that had it, but then apparently, or at some point, and once again, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, the uh, once again, Missouri Highway Patrol was in charge. Um, I know that after the uh, coroner's inquest, it was handed over to them that said it needed to be investigated and it was not investigated and as we saw um once in a timmy's case timmy um it was supposed to have been handled if i remember correctly by the uh, missouri highway patrol and we see how that goes so i would not put a <laughs> my opinion i would not put a lot of faith in the missouri highway patrol once again, I'm not, you know, I'm not down in law enforcement. I'm not anti-law enforcement. Um, I take it every case on an individual basis. But just from what I've seen from these two cases alone, from Timmy's case and Durante's case, um, I wouldn't <laughs> I wouldn't trust any kind of law enforcement around uh, Madison County or the Missouri Highway Patrol. <laughs> yes, Miss Barbara said uh, 4,400 people in Fredericktown, Missouri. So, yeah, that would um, be a, a small town. Because, like I said, I live in, uh, you know, we may be pushing it if, if I say we're 2,000. Um, 
or under 2000 so yeah 4400 is small so miss kimberly said eight hours i don't know what you're referring to um Because I know it was, I think you said longer or maybe eight hours or more um, before you even found out um, about, about Durante's death. Um, Nan says, how long before did he have the pins and bandage on his hand? I remember reading that, but I'm not for sure. I'm sure Miss Kimberly or Miss Erica probably, um, I'm behind in comments, so. Okay, so Miss Erica said two days that he had um, the the operation, and it was two days later. And then Miss Kimberly said three days, so two to three days. Yeah, Shauna says, uh, I was wondering if they called it self-harm so quickly. Yeah, it was like basically immediately um, that they called it self-harm within that, probably that day or at least two days. I mean, it's just unreal. And I apologize for not turning my cam on, but I've been blowing my nose and my nose is all red and my face is puffy. So <laughs> I'm still here, though, as long as you guys can still hear me. We're doing good. Yep, exactly. Nan says uh, that he would not have been able to hurt himself, in my opinion. I'm not a specialist, but I have a sort of knowledge as a retired RN. Yeah, um, to me, that is one of the biggest things is, you know, aside from the obvious, what I've already stated about if, if and, I, and in my opinion, I do not believe uh, that it was self-harm, obviously. Um, why would you do it in an unfamiliar place? That's um, statistically, that's not how people self-harm themselves. And then um, if you use a firearm and your dominant hand, you can't use your dominant hand, it, you know, yeah, doesn't make sense at all. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Ms. Barb was answering Sean, it says they do that just about to uh, everyone here. Yeah. Every, just about every case that I have looked at in Fredericktown or anything that's mentioned about Fredericktown, Madison County, it's a uh, self-harm, self-harm, self-harm automatically, just without any investigation. It is just unreal. Yep, there we go. Miss uh, Marion's got the big uh, red flag going. Yep, bunches and bunches of red flags. All right. Miss Erica said a uh, surgery on the 22nd, left the home on the 23rd, found out he was deceased um, the 25th around 12 p.m. Yep. So that was more, that was what, the 24th when it happened that night or the early morning hours of the 25th? Uh, yep. It's just unreal. Absolutely. Uh, I'm sure Arctic Fox has looked into this. He says uh, all kinds of red flags. You guys aren't going to believe how this was handled. Absolutely. Yep. And absolutely uh, three different uh, self harms in the same house. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Shauna says, uh, holy sheesh, are they blind? No, they're not blind. They just don't want to. They're blind by choice, in my opinion. Um, blind by choice. 
That is uh, the question, Shauna. What kind of ties does this man, I'm assuming you're uh, uh, referring to uh, James, what kind of ties does this man have in that community? That is the question. Um, I have my ideas, um, but nothing that I can prove or that I know for certain. But um, I think uh, he has some definite, uh, very bad ties, doing some very uh, bad things, obviously. Um, not to mention his uh, ideologies, his filthy, disgusting ideologies that he has. Um, I think he's got his um, hands in the pockets of some uh, high-powered people, and he's basically uh, getting away with the uh, M, Red Room, homicides. And uh, people are looking the other way. But once again, that's just my opinion. Absolutely. Uh, Fox said it. That's one. Yep. Yep. Um, Arctic Fox, I'm, sure, I'm assuming you're uh, also referring to uh, Mr. Wade. It says he is a uh, substance head and all the uh, dealers own the uh, police in Fredericktown. Yep, that's my thought too. Absolutely. Miss Barbara would know also, in my opinion, corruption all over that town. Absolutely. Shauna says, thank you for sharing this. Absolutely. There's no way that I couldn't share this, after, share this story after I found out about it. Um, it's just uh, so horrible, along with Timmy's case. Um, Timmy's case, Dronte's case, all the other cases that we haven't even delved into yet that, that I plan on uh, looking into. Absolutely. Uh, yep. That is a hashtag. Hashtag justice for Dronte put that <laughs> any social any every social media post you make uh hashtag justice for Durante, hashtag justice uh, for timmy d's i put that in all of my posts now that i make on um my youtube uh, and my uh, facebook uh, group and page Uh, Nan says, is a James still behind bars? I do not know. Um, I know that as of what, 2021 or 20, no, 22. Um, when he was uh, arrested for the uh, incident where he uh, was following the vehicle of uh, whoever it was because he supposedly thought his daughters were in danger or whatever cockamamie story he had about that. Um, I don't know if he's still behind bars, though. In my opinion, he should be, but what do I know? Absolutely. Yeah, Miss Kimberly says, um, Tom McDonald, that is not the body of someone on, I can't say the, someone on substance. Yeah. All the um, <laughs> M heads that I've ever seen um, definitely do not look like uh, Durante looked um, at the time of his death. Um, usually they are very, uh, very skinny, uh, don't have a lot of teeth. Um, marks and sores on their face um yeah i'm not i'm not buying the uh yeah i'm not buying it yep uh nan says this is unbelievable yes ma'am it is i mean you you can't make this stuff up that's just the the horrible part um But you can't make it up. It's like something that you would see on a a, a TV show, you know, um, like Law and Order or something, you know. I mean, you wouldn't even, I don't know, you wouldn't even see that thing, that kind of thing on a regular TV show. Maybe on a movie about um, corrupt 
law enforcement that you would see something like this but absolutely arctic says i have no doubt Dronte would have made it to the nfl and fulfilled his dream absolutely he actually reminds me of uh when i saw those pictures of him in his uh uniform reminds me of uh <clears throat> excuse me my voice is trying to go of uh the blind side uh which is a true story based on uh, michael Ower, the movie the blind side um that's what it reminded me of so much that's what durante reminded me of oh he he definitely had the build and if he was uh, what they say six three and 250 or 260 and um he could move had moves he could move for what they call move for a big man that's uh what the nfl is made up of now that that's uh that's what they want absolutely as kimberly said not bad kids they didn't go anywhere just out on the parking lot absolutely i'm sure or um, i'm assuming you're referring to what um was it isaiah said that they were bad kids for sneaking out no they weren't bad kids um they were they were teenagers they were kids you know when i was a teenager in the small town i lived in or actually it's a town over we would drive over there and either hang out in uh the friend's uh, yard in the walmart parking lot in the pizza hut parking lot wherever we could hang out we would hang out you know just being kids just being teenagers not causing any problems and for the most part the uh, law enforcement here um we were actually lucky and had good um, law enforcement around here they left us alone as long as we weren't um underage drinking or anything like that they left us alone you know and we weren't raising you know being too loud or anything they left us alone Yep, absolutely. Uh, you knew says, um, I read up on him. He had 659 milligrams is a lethal uh, dose. 200 milligrams is considered a OD. Yeah. So when I read that, that's why I said that whether he took it willingly, which I, in my opinion, he did not. Um, and I, like I said, I don't know if because i said i had thc supposedly also in his system which is a component of uh, the mary jane can does anybody know when somebody may have answered because i'm once again i'm still behind in comments can m somehow be put in with into a mary jane joint and i mean i don't know how i mean somebody give me an idea of how M can be ingested unknowingly, unwillingly. Um, because something tells me, just in my opinion, that that, you know, if he had that much in his system, that it was unknowingly and unwillingly. And how could that happen? Um, because I'm not an expert on M, you know. I, I've about the only thing I've done is I've, I smoked a couple of joints back, you know, 30 years ago. Um, not judging anybody who has done, you know, because I understand addiction. Um, I grew up with an alcoholic um, father, so I understand addiction. I don't judge um, people who have addictions, but um, I just don't know how, you know, if how M could be disguised in any way to be given to somebody without their knowledge absolutely miss erica says uh, they were not teens our trailers faced each other so they would climb out the windows and play in the park absolutely yeah like i said they were just being uh teens young adults um just just doing what young adults do not causing trouble Just making my way through comments. 
Absolutely. Nan says, uh, you really have such a lovely family, all with sunny smiles. Yes, I love those pictures that uh, Miss Kimberly sent to me that I used some of them in the slides. Beautiful, beautiful family. Beautiful family. Yeah, Miss Marion says the same thing. Beautiful family. Absolutely. I miss Kimberly said it was on a Sunday. Yep, Miss Barba says you're right. That's just like it goes. Nobody wants to take any responsibility. Yeah, it's just like the uh, Jefferson County and Timmy's case and Madison County were fighting over. They neither one of them wanted to handle it. And Highway Missouri Highway Patrol don't want to handle any have anything to do with anything. It's just like they want to pawn it off on each other and nobody wants to do their job. It's just unbelievable. Yep, Arctic says they play past the ball often. He's probably long gone, but our friend Dave out on the prowl said heading off to work will be listening and driving. Thank you, Dave. Dave, uh, for joining. Uh, Dave also has a very good channel. Uh, he usually comes on very uh late at night early in the morning on uh usually during the weekend um with his uh news updates things in the news that he shares i find out about a lot of things by watching dave's lives things cases stories that I've, i haven't heard about okay miss kimberly said uh, something uh, that came from followers which is a, a bold-faced lie um, I don't know what you're referring to exactly, but because I'm behind the comments, but yeah, I don't think I would trust anything with the Dedeker or any of the coroners or Emmys or whoever did the autopsies. Absolutely. Shauna echoes uh, mine and uh, I'm sure everybody uh, says my heart and prayers are, are for you, Erica. You're very strong to share your story. I know it's hard. Yes, it just broke my heart because um, I did watch several interviews um, with Miss Kimberly and Miss Erica. And most of the time, Miss Erica couldn't even talk because she was just right down crying. And it just broke my heart. Um, I just wanted to go go through my um, go through my phone and give them a big hug. Give her a big hug. Her and Miss Kimberly breaks my heart. And Miss Erica says, if you look in the crime scene photos, which I don't have access to those, um, Durante still had his hospital bracelet on his left wrist. Okay, so when he had his, from when he had his surgery, he still had the hospital bracelet. Yeah, unreal. Ah. So, Miss Erica said in 2021, they also were not embalming people due to COVID. Hmm. I did not know that. So then, if they weren't embalming people, because I do remember reading in an article that one of the, um, after the second autopsy was done, because if I remember correctly, the second autopsy was done after he was supposedly embalmed. Um, but you're saying they weren't embalming people. One of the and that the uh, second autopsy said that there was no stippling and uh, no stippling or soot. Um, Dedeker made the excuse that the reason that there wasn't any stippling or soot was because he had been embalmed and it had been washed off. But if they weren't embalming people, how could he use that as an excuse for there not being any stippling or soot? That is very interesting. I did not know that. Thank you, Miss Erica. Another red flag. Yeah, uh, Miss Kimberly said, James said it wasn't a party. Yeah, you, uh, on one of the slides when we were going through the questions um, in uh, the post that I'm assuming uh, Lainey made, said, first she said, 
that there was not a party. There was no substances, no alcohol. And then in the same post, she turns around and says that uh, Durante shouldn't have been at the party because he wasn't invited. So which was it? Was there a party or was there not a party? Um, and then you say, uh, Miss Kimberly just said, James said that it wasn't a party. D uh, differing, uh, differing stories. Sto Once again, uh, uh, as in Timmy's case, uh, different uh, changing stories. And Miss Erica said, uh, he said it was her party and only five friends were to be there. Yeah, Miss Barbara says, going back to the 911 call, he's muting his phone. Yeah, that's, to me, that's what it sounds like. They said uh, supposedly his phone was cutting out because of bad reception. But usually, if it, in my experience, if it's bad reception, you get the staticky, and you, you get a, a couple of words here and there. But to me, that sounded like it would go all the way quiet for a little bit. You didn't hear anything, no static or nothing. And then it would come back on and he would start talking again. But but I agree, it's uh, very suspicious. Yeah, Arctic Fox says uh, it sounded both uh, messed out and way too calm at the same time. Yeah, supposedly, I don't, you know, like I said, allegedly, supposedly in articles I read, supposedly he had been uh, drinking a lot and was uh, drunk. But I mean, <laughs> back in my younger Wilder days, I did my fair share of drinking and I never sounded like that when I was drunk. I sounded a lot more. Uh, coherent than that. Yep, that's uh, what I heard too. Once again, I'm assuming Miss Erica is going back to the 911 call. Oh, but, but like they shot him. Yep, that's that's what I I could only make out um, something something shot him is what I heard. Um, but yeah, I agree. Yep. Um, JP Parton is also missing. Yep. I'm going to have to look into that one too. Absolutely. Yep. Absolutely. Miss Erica says, Zach yells, John Paul. Yeah. To me, that does not sound like shut up. It sounds like John Paul. And he doesn't make a statement, obviously, because he's missing three weeks later before the. Uh, Coroner's inquest. Absolutely. And once again, Miss Marion, more red flags. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's another question uh, I had. Miss Erica says, How can you not be breathing but gasping for air? Exactly. Get your story straight. Was he not breathing or was he gasping for air? In my opinion, he was not breathing, but they were just. Trying to make it sound like uh, he was, he was. Yep, you knew uh, Grease too, says uh, she listened to it uh, so many times, 98%. I'm sure, pretty sure I hear, oh my God, you shot him. I hate this. Yeah, that's pretty much what I heard too. In my opinion, I have to I have to put in my opinion so I won't get in trouble. Miss Erica says, um, answering you knew it says it's, act, it's an actual name of a person who was there. Gotcha. Miss Erica said that she's uh, had it. The 911 call slowed down with studio equipment. Excellent. And law enforcement hasn't, or anybody hasn't offered to listen to it slow down. Or, I mean, I, I, I don't even know why I'm asking that question because I already know the answer. I'm sure they didn't. 
Okay, so I'm assuming the picture I showed of the um, attic, Miss uh, Erica said this is where he was after um, they moved him, they cut the floor. Okay. Did they, once again, I don't know why I'm asking this question, but did they take it for evidence or they just, the James cut the floor to get the, the cleaned up? Yeah, Miss Erica said, where is the puddle of blood? Yes. Yeah, see, so that's what uh, you know, says. They cleaned up the crime and moved him. That's illegal. Yeah, I was wondering, about, I mean, you don't clean. Oh, yeah. The only reason you would clean do clean a crime scene is because it's a crime scene and you and you did something you took somebody's life and you want to try to hide that fact. And Arctic said, uh, I wouldn't put it past the authorities in Fredericktown to grab a mop and help clean it. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. And Miss Erica said the people at the party so-called uh, came the next day to clean because the sheriff told them they could. That <sighs> unreal, unreal. Miss Erica said, uh, that's somebody, that's someone being Cody. Absolutely, Arctic, uh, says Bobby Boone gets around. She's in the mix of all kinds of shady uh, shite. Yeah, that just blew my mind when I was found, came across that one article. And uh, so that Durante came in and said to Bobby Boone, you set me up. I'm like, holy shnikes. That name was brought up in uh, Timmy's case. Guys, I'm trying to get caught up. I don't even know how far I'm behind. I'm just about an hour behind in comments. Uh... Oh, yes, Miss Erica had to leave. Um, says I got to get off. Um, thank you all. Thank you. Uh, I'm so glad Miss Erica was here. Um, once again, uh, I don't know if Miss Kimberly is still here or not. Um, like I said, I'm an hour behind in comments. Um, I just thank uh, Miss Kimberly and Miss Erica for being here. Absolutely. Thoughts, prayers, and good vibes always. No, oh, Miss Barbara says uh, Bobby Boone is everywhere in five cases that she knows of. Mm. Yep. Absolutely. Miss Kimberly says he did not use him. I, I believe you, Miss Kimberly. I absolutely. Absolutely. I believe you. I think somehow somebody may have answered it because I asked earlier, how could you, what? What could you do to him to put it in with something else to where somebody could take it without knowing that they were taking it? Because in my if if it was in his system, in my opinion, he ingested it without knowing that he was ingesting it. It wasn't willingly. Arctic said, uh, true, especially if it's just been fired. Yeah, I'm assuming you're going back to um, 
how the residue got on the sand there. I mean, I've, I've watched and I know um, Arctic Fox watches Mr. Steve. I've heard Mr. Steve say so many times that you do not have to fire a firearm to get um, residue a GSR on your hands. Um, you can just. I mean, I, you know, you can at the very least, I mean, just hold a, just hold a, a firearm. And if that firearm has been fired and doesn't even have to be recently, maybe, but definitely if it has been fired recently, all you have to do is touch it and you get um, GSR on your hands or your clothes or wherever. Um, so yeah, it's very easy to, uh, you know, just because he had a GSR on his hands doesn't mean that he fired a weapon. Yeah, Miss Kimberly said, uh, James first said he wasn't breathing. Yep. Absolutely. Uh, Miss Kimberly said they are lying. No GSR was found on Dante's hand because they didn't bag his hands properly to even find out. Absolutely. Oh, Mr. Steve was here. I don't know if he's still here. Uh, he always has words of wisdom. Uh, hello, Mr. Steve, if you're still here. I don't know if you're still here. I'm uh, about an hour behind in comments. Uh, trying to catch up. Witnesses advise young black man shows up, becomes paranoid. They arm him. He acts crazy with a gun, and yet they don't call 911. No white household acts this way. Absolutely. Yeah, I just... <laughs> Yeah, it does not. I'm not buying any of it. None of it. Glad to have you here, Mr. Steve. Like I said, I don't know if he's still here. I'm about an hour behind in comments, but I'm going to get caught up. I apologize for sniffing. I might have to mute out for a second and blow my nose. Okay, I'm back. Sorry, I didn't want to be rude and blow my nose on the on mic. I don't have my cam on right now, but Yeah, Miss Barbara said uh, that's what they do here in Frederick Town. Um, they get polygraphed without being certified. Apparently, it's normal from what they're telling me. I don't see how somebody that's not certified to do polygraph tests can do a polygraph test. It does not make sense. No, thank you, Miss Barbara. Miss Barbara said I was doing a great job. I'm trying. I was trying. Um, doing my best. Yeah, Miss Kimberly said, uh, deceased people can't harm themselves either because would have prohibited the other. Yeah. I just keep going back to the fact that. If he had that much M in his system where it would be a lethal dose, he would not have, I mean, you would, he would either be deceased from the M, an OD, like somebody said earlier, or he would definitely not have the coordination and be able to pick up a firearm and, um, and harm themselves, you know. Yep. Arctic agrees. It says definitely John Paul not shut up. Yeah, I heard. I listened. That was to me. That was except for the female that said I hate something something. I hate this. Um, to me, the most thing the thing that you can hear the smoke the clearest is John Paul. I'm not shut up. I agree with you there. Yep, you knew calls BS. I think uh, we all call BS on this. Yep, Arctic says there's another one missing from that area named DJ Bowers. Can't keep track of all the Missouri cases they've covered that still have no answers. Absolutely. 
I could spend the rest of my time on a YouTube covering just the uh, Fredericktown cases. Absolutely. I'm uh, assuming Miss Barbara's talking about um, uh, Jean Paul uh, says, yes, get rid of any witnesses that they think will talk. Absolutely. That is my opinion. I can't read all of it, but uh, Arctic says Madison County prosecutors another chicken uh, shite. Oh, hold on. I got a my laptop battery was about to go dead. I had to plug it up. There we go. Yep, it's another chicken shite. Yeah. Well, Miss Barbara said he doesn't live there anymore. They let him leave the state, James. So he's out of jail, and they and they let him leave the state. Well, of course he'd want to leave the state because he, in my opinion, he's done lots of bad things. Ms. Kimberly said, no attic in his bedroom. You can't render aid to a deceased person. Um, James clearly says he is not breathing. He was already deceased. I agree with you, Ms. Kimberly, in my opinion. That's a good point. Um, I didn't think about that. Ms. Kimberly said, it is uh, my belief that he was supposed to be a missing person. We were never supposed to find him. He was hiding in that nasty place. Yes, I think, in my opinion, that he knew something was up, that something, uh, they were planning on doing something bad, horrible to him, and he was trying to find a place to hide, and unfortunately, um, I don't know exactly how many people were at the party or whatever it was, but in my opinion, uh, he was severely outnumbered. In my opinion, he was somehow given um, illegal substances without his knowledge. And they were either hoping that he would OD. Maybe that was it. Maybe they gave him somehow. Now, this is just speculation on my part. gave him somehow without his knowledge gave him the substance hoping thinking that he would od and they could call it in as an od and he didn't od so they're like oh crap what do we do now um let's say that he had a firearm and he used it on himself i mean that's I may be grasping at straws, but I don't know. Um, that's just, a, you know, a scenario. Yeah, Miss Kimberly, that's what I thought. I said law enforcement didn't return the phone. Uh, somebody else did. Uh, somebody named Eddie. Yeah, I thought I remember in the interview with you that you said, uh, it was a friend or a, one of the people that he was with. And I think, and like I said, I'm still uh, a little bit less than an hour behind in comments that um, I don't think any of his other belongings were returned um, except for the phone and law enforcement did not return it. It was uh, somebody else, a civilian. Yes, the uh, justice for Durante's site was done by Campaign Zero. And I do have a link to it in the description box, so definitely check it out. That's it. Um, the Journal of Stephanie Rivers. 
definitely look that up on YouTube. It has a very good interview with uh, Miss Kimberly and Miss Erica. Um, definitely check it out. Absolutely, Miss Kimberly said, "Thank you all for your support." Absolutely. Yep, absolutely. Miss Marion says, "Thank you all, and please share all of the stories in Fredericktown, Missouri." Yes, ma'am. Absolutely. Uh, Arctic says, sending prayers to you and your family. Kimberly, absolutely. Absolutely. You know, uh, justice for Durante. Yep. Miss Kimberly said, uh, talking to Miss Barb, love you. Yes, it's hard, but we have to endure for justice. Absolutely. Uh, we're here. We got your backs. Yep, Miss Barb, there was no investigation. Just like with Timmy, no investigation. You knew once again they dropped the ball, absolutely. Ms. Barb says yes, it was the same Troop E Highway Patrol. Okay. Uh, Miss Barbara says, please look into Ashley Whitlow. Let me get my notebook. <laughs> says, please look into Ashley Whitlock um, Lunsford. They said she self-harmed herself too, and Bobby Boone was there. Oh, imagine that. All right, let me write this down. Sorry, my cat just came in. I hear you, dude. Just got to wait a minute. Ashley Whitlock. All right, I got that written down uh, in my notebook to look into. Yeah, Miss Kimberly said that they didn't find out about Dronte's death until eight hours later. And once again, people, it was not from the police. The police never made any attempt to notify Miss Kimberly or Miss Erica about Dronte's death. They found out a family member found out from somebody and called, um, I believe, Miss either Miss Kimberly or Miss Erica, and then they called uh, Miss Kimberly called. Um, I forget now which law enforcement it was. I remember it was in one of the slides. Unacceptable. Unacceptable. Yep, I have to agree with you. Uh, you knew. If anybody looked like a user, it was definitely him. He looked more like one. Uh, Dronte definitely did not look like one, in my opinion. Most definitely. Oh, thank you, Miss Barbara. Miss Barbara says, "I hope you're taking care of yourself. I press for you. I'm, I'm making it. Like I said, I, I get this at least one time a year. I get a really bad um, <clears throat> head cold and a uh, sinus infection. It just takes me a couple of weeks to get over it. But and again, my throat gets scratchy and hurts. But I'm fine. I'm good. But thank you for your prayers and your thoughts." And I apologize for my nasally and scratchy voice. Okay, so you know says injecting EM involves using a needle to uh, directly into the bloodstream uh, is one of the most dangerous methods of use as it can easily lead to OD and death. Yes. So, see, I keep going back to the fact of how, that's why I was asking how, if there was any way that you could, uh, uh, you know, 
aside from holding somebody down against their will and injecting it which Durante was a big boy I mean it would take in my opinion if, if it would take a lot of <laughs> strong people to hold uh, Durante down but if there's any other way that he could have they could have given it to him he could have ingested it without him knowing it um so I said I don't I don't know much about you know but to me that thank you miss marion says thank you uh, we all thank you southern guy it's not just me it's all of us it is the creators it is the communities um it is the families um it takes all of us all of us I think I might be caught up in comments. Yeah, Miss Kimberly says uh, he was not hiding in that nasty place. See, I, I just can't. And Miss Barbara says, uh, I believe they held him hostage. I, in my opinion, that I tend to agree with you. I mean, I just don't see something something obviously something bad happened i you know i think he was there you know i don't even know if he knew if they even told him where where they were going why they were going what kind of story they gave him and when they got there and he saw where he was or who was there and then tried to get away and he couldn't because i mean i just i i agree with miss barber i mean something i don't i i absolutely in my opinion do not think he was there by his by choice somehow he was in my opinion i agree with miss barber he was held there against his will somehow some way um through threat of violence uh, or something and just i don't know um yeah miss barbara said um i think they set um him up like you said in the audio yeah yeah it's yeah something I think it was, in my opinion, once again, I have to say in my opinion, because I wasn't there, obviously, I don't know. In my opinion, he was set up for some reason or another, whether it was because they thought for some reason this rumor got out that they thought he snitched on uh, Cody or whoever it was for this, you know, or if it was for some other reason that bogus crap or something i don't know it's just it's beyond me um all right i'm going to we've been on here over three hours um i'm gonna do a little bit of shameless plugging if anybody has any last last thoughts last questions last comments um please put them in um and i will do a little bit of shameless plugging, please. Um, if you don't share anything else from my channel, please share this video. This video, Timmy D's video, I've now made a playlist um, sp specifically for Fredericktown, Missouri cases. I named it, <laughs> actually named it Fredericktown, Missouri cases. Timmy's case is there. Please watch Timmy's case. Please share it. Um, Durante's will be put in there. And um, when I go back and edit and it'll let me put it in there, please share, share, share um, to get this information out to as many people as possible. Um, subscribe if you haven't already. If you're new here, welcome. Um, I hope you found this uh, informative, educational, um, aware, bringing awareness. Um, like, share, comment, all those things help this um, information get out to as many people as possible. Um, if you have questions, comments, if you have a case that you would like me to cover, 
email it to me at Southern Gal True Crime, excuse me, at hotmail.com, uh, name of the victim, the state it came from, any details you may have. You can find me on Facebook at Southern Gal True Crime. I have a group and a page. Um, if you want to help support the channel and awareness for the missing, um, all the donation links are in the description box of uh, not only this live, but also in uh, the about section of my page. And I think that is all my shameless plugging. Let's see what you guys got to say. You know, says good night. Good night. You know, thank you for being here. Uh, Miss Barbara says uh, whatever it was, there should have been an investigation. There wasn't. Absolutely, Miss Barbara. Absolutely. Just like with Timmy's case, they shouldn't. They should have investigated it. Miss Barbara, good night. Thank you for what you do. Love you all. Thank you. We love you too, Miss Barb. Oh, OK. Uh, you know, says I have a live tomorrow at 10 a.m. Central with uh, Miss Kimberly Durante's grandma. Excellent. Excellent. I will. Is your ch uh, if you're still here, you know, is your channel name your same as your username? If you haven't scheduled um, the live schedule already or when you schedule it, I will put a link to it on my community page and I will try to make it a point to be up at uh, tomorrow at 10 to watch. Thank you, you know, absolutely. Yeah, Miss Marion says, thank you all so much for being here and for all the families. Thank you, Miss Marion. Thank you for being here. Always a pleasure, ma'am. I love you. Oh, it's all right, Dandy. I always forget to give a heads up. Dandy says, sorry I'm late. I hope you're feeling better. Yeah, I'm doing better. Good to see you, Dandy. One of my wonderful uh, mods and friends. Miss Barbara says she will be there. Ms. Mary says, thank you. You're most welcome, ma'am. Oh, awesome. Uh, Dandy says she was out ce celebrating her guy's birthday. Happy birthday to your guy. Replay uh, crew is good. And tomorrow night, um, well, I'm looking through, uh, letting you guys get some more comments and questions in, or good nights. Um, if my voice will hold out, I'm probably going to do a uh, true crime after dark tomorrow night. Um, probably around starting around eight thirty or nine. Um, I went through I always during the month when I'm all the missing that I share in my live streams or videos, I put their missing information in a, I have a missing flyers and information in a folder on my phone and i went through it today and made a, a slideshow of all the missing most of the missing that i featured in the last month or so so and i found some articles and i have some updates and some info about some of the missing so we're going to go through that tomorrow and we have this horrible case with the two uh, moms from oklahoma that was missing um we still have uh, caleb harris we still have sebastian rogers so we're just going to talk you know you know how much true crime after dark are. They're a looser format. Um, we're we're a business. Need we need to talk about business, but we can you know a little bit looser um, and be loose, but still get information out about missing that needs to be out there. So anybody who can uh, attend tomorrow night around eight thirty or nine Central Time, please. I'd love to see you there. Yeah, Miss uh, Kimberly says uh, he had no reason to snitch about anything. I believe it was the person who had something to gain um, from the police. Absolutely. Yeah, everybody's wishing uh, Dandy's guy a happy birthday. All right, guys. Um, I'm going to get out of here now because we're a little bit over three hours. Thank you, everybody. Um, that was here in the chat, um, most especially Miss Kimberly and Miss Erica, Durante's grandmother and mother. Um, as always, Miss Barbara and Miss Marion, uh, Timmy's uh, mother and aunt, 
any other family members that were here, all the other creators that were here, Arctic Fox, check Arctic Fox out. Um, you knew who I did not know or had forgotten uh, uh, has a channel. Definitely going to check them out. Um, thank you, Miss Barbara. I always count on Miss Barbara. Miss Barbara says, I'll be there tomorrow night. Love what you do for families. Thank you, Miss Barbara. And you know, says they're going to be here tomorrow night. Absolutely. Thank you, guys. Um, so without me burbling, bur see, I can't talk anymore. And I haven't even taken my knuckle for the night to go to sleep. <laughs> so I can't blame it on the knuckle. Um, thank you Miss, so much, you guys, for being here. And I love you all. And I will see you tomorrow night. Bye, guys.